Panago Pizza presents S S D P P the Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, and Jesse Blake. Let's go. So, is it Kaski Suo or is it Kaski Suo? Well, because you could, Casimir you... Kaski Suo or Suo's wife on on Twitter has the pronunciation, and she says it's Kaski Suo. Cool. Well, I got news for you, and okay. that is that Kaski Swallow's wife is fake news. What? What? She is fake news. Oh, man. So you're going to go up against his wife. The Let's man's go. family yeah. is telling you something. Jesse! <laughs> I have from Stacy the Nerd. Thank you, Stacy. She said, hey, Steve Dangle, I just met Kasky Swo's family. They're super sweet. And I asked how to pronounce his name. You're saying it right! Ha! There you go. So, no matter what she tells the so-called media, the fake news media, I don't, I feel dirty just saying I find, that. I, Listen, I it, I I'm it, right. I just find it a bit funny that she's put it on her Twitter bio. And somebody who says they met his family, yeah, without any proof, tweets you, and you're like, you know, it's kind of that's the one I'm taking. Are you calling Stacy the nerd a liar? I, I'm not. She would have made her uh... handle Stacy the liar then. <laughs> she's not. She's a nerd, which means she's attentive to detail. How and dare you? Just also what? the team that he plays for. What? Sent out a media release and told all the broadcasters how to say his name. Well, they're not doing a whole lot right right so, now, Jesse. So <laughs> I'm not even going to take their word for it. I feel all like right? if the whole hockey world was saying his name wrong and you were the only one saying it right. No. That well, when, they might be right. When in the history of North American sports have we ever mispronounced a European name? Uh, it's happened. <laughs> it's true. I will not stop saying Kaski Swole. Okay. All right. It's easier to say. I'll yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. Like, I'd rather say Kasky Swo as well. Three yeah. and a quarter syllables is less than four. Kasky Swo. <laughs> okay. Man. You see how it's three and a quarter? All right, it's all not right. quite three. You I'm see? A, I'm going to call him Double K. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 That could work. KK. That could work. KK is a little. KK TTYL. You get, you get too close to another K. No. That's, how, that's how the Leafs played in front of him. It was KK TTYL. <laughs> See what I think? G2G. <sighs> I think Let's it was FML. A, yeah. <laughs> Let's was. get into who wore the crown. Live generously. Life treats you royally. And why not for yourself? Why not? A, and a friend, a crown royal. Because, hey, listen, we're talking about who wore the crown. It's about the leaf that best exemplifies being a leaf, which I'm not really sure we're clear on the definition of best exemplifies being <sighs> a leaf this year because we really haven't had a great definition of it. But we're gonna dan- we're gonna try. I think when we came up with this segment, we're like, yeah, this is a really good team, and this will be easy. <sighs> The worst part about the Leafs is they're not bad enough to be bad, but they are definitely not good enough to be good. And that is the worst place to be. However, there are players on this team that do stand out. Steve Dangle, who are you giving the crown to from last night's game and combine that with the Boston game the night before? <sighs> Just, it's not even a thought. Uh, Kashimir Kaski swole. Um, poor guy. <laughs> First career NHL game. I thought he battled. There were times he looked a little small at his net, times mm. where he like overplayed. But uh, for the most part, man, he made some spectacular saves. And uh, before the first goal, um, <laughs> he was battling, made a really good save, but no one helped clear the rebound. He asked for a goalie interference review. Um, the coaching staff thought otherwise. He got bowled over. Was he over. right, do you think? Uh, on that one, probably not, no. Um, it's weird, right? I don't even know what is, uh, what you can and can't penalize anymore. So, like, if oh. the Leafs got that challenge wrong, do they get a penalty? Mm-hmm. I think they do, which is... Yeah. O- otherwise, why not just do it? Yeah. For, um, so, when he got... That was the f- the first the first goal against. Oh, the first... Yeah, yeah. Because he, he wanted one. Yeah, if they had challenged, that's a two-minute power play for, okay. uh, well, pe- pe- the, for the Penguins. So, that's why they avoided it. Yeah. Um, and you know what? That's probably for the best. There were too many calls like that where the team's like, well, we have nothing to lose. Now right. you do. Yeah. Uh, friggin' another guy trips right over Jake Muzzin, barrels right into him. He's got no shot, and by then, the game's out of reach. There was really only one it would have been nice for him to have, and that was the third one. Mm-hmm. Or it was just a wrist shot that went by his blocker. A just friggin' ripper, though. <laughs> yeah. And, like, 
what are you going to do? Got to give it to Kasky Swo. Uh, how do you look good in a 6-1 loss? You just got to be... You don't got to outrun the bear. Uh, you just got to outrun uh, everyone else. So you give it to Kasky Swo for... for Kasky Suo, excuse me. Suo. For, uh, Kasky Seu. So uh, you give it to him <laughs> for dressing. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll give the crown to anyone who... Uh, made it even seem like the game meant something to them. <laughs> okay, well, here, what, you hang on to that. You oh, hang yeah. on to that. I'm going to give my crown of uh, the funny. last two games to Justin Hall. You know, really? they, you know, they talk about the friend zone. The friend zone's a tricky place with yeah. anybody because if someone says, hey, listen, we're just friends, and you say, wait a second, though, we have such great chemistry, and they go, exactly, I wouldn't want to ruin their friendship by oh. dating. Oh. Justin Hall has come out of the Mike Babcock friend zone, but with Mike Babcock, it's not a friend zone. It's a zone of you're never going to play on this team ever again. Friend dungeon. Friend dungeon. Yeah, the friend dungeon. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. But what I want to say to you is this. Justin Hall has done what no Leaf has done in Mike Babcock's four and a half-ish years here. And that's come out of the Mike Babcock, you're not my friend zone. And Well, there was one other one. Who was I that? Would, I would say Josh Levo, and then they promptly traded him. So, right, you know, right. You know, but, uh, Justin Hall is uh, but Justin he's still Hall, here. Is a very good hockey player, mm-hmm. and it's so nice. Very good, what hockey player? Player who plays hockey. What? Not player. a practicer. What is a player? Oh, he's a player. There you go. Sorry, oh, I'm very confused. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm still very... thinking about that conversation we had with Sean Fitzgerald last Sunday uh-huh. when he told us about Mike's accent. It made like, me. It made me like him a lot more for sure. Like I'm still, I'm still thinking about. Maybe that Maybe right super now. <laughs> stoked on him being the coach for sure. Jesse. Who would you give your crown to? I know you guys have forgotten, but there's been three games since we recorded. Yeah, the they Islanders. lost all of them, so they blend together. So <laughs> the Islanders game, the Boston oh the game. Islanders, oh good, the Boston game, right? The, oh Boston, uh, oh good, yeah, and the Pittsburgh game. Oh Pittsburgh, well, my favorite. Know, I, Adam hates them. Listen, they didn't beat a real team last night. No, they sh- certainly didn't. Don't hold your hat. They didn't. Just so you know, not a real team. Nope. The, anyway, they, haven't beaten a real beat team them. since uh, April, so. <laughs> anyway, Jesse, continue. Well, in that New York Islanders game that happened after our podcast recording, William Nylander scored a goal. Do you know why that goal was significant? Why? With that goal, William Nylander surpa- surpassed his goal total from all of last year. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Yes. How many did he have last year? Six? He had seven. And now he sits on eight. Oh, he's at eight? Mm-hmm. Oh. In, a mu- in six weeks. In six That's amazing. Weeks. So I think, wow. hey, always improving. Great life lesson. Get better every time you go out there. And William Nylander this year has gotten better. So good for him. He sure Here's has. Here's the crown. He sure has. And he sure will wear that crown. That's who wore the crown for this week. Brought to you, as always, by Crown Royal. The next time the puck drops, why not? Why not? Live generously and treat your friends and your crew to a Crown Royal Old Fashioned. Now, Steve, you mentioned that it would have been nice this weekend to see a player who cared. I tell you what. I'm going to take this little Easter Seal Stanley Cup down. Yeah, I, we'll get to the Easter I, Seal I, I Stanley Cup, which, by the way, you've moved video. it like eight times I since know. we started. Jesse, I can put my hands on it all. You should have seen him in Starbucks walking around with it. He's like, you know, I probably should put this above my head. <laughs> <laughs> Felt great. And I'm like, you know. A couple people stared from across the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not even making fun. I'm, I, nope. You earned it, man. It's okay. I'm going to I'll take the jersey off. I just, I don't Why want them. Why are you them. taking the jersey what off? What are you doing? Well, because I just, I just don't want to associate good things with bad things. Oh. So you're about to say some things that might be inappropriate and you don't want Easter Seals logo on it, is what you're saying. No. So why not take the jersey off? Why not? There's a few other people who should probably take the jersey off and throw it in the garbage. Who do you want to start with? I don't even know, Adam. I don't even freaking know. I've been used to, over the past year, looking at individual performances. There were nights where I go, Willie, what the hell? Mitch. What are you thinking? Austin, need a little bit more out of you. Freddie, should have had that one. Never really say it about JT. Ooh, Morgan. You imagine Morgan Riley was the captain this year? He'd be in the paper shredder already. Yes, yes, he would. He'd be torched. Yes, he would. He'd be torched. 
There's no talk of stripping Tavares. They would legitimately be talking about stripping Rodney. There was a play last night in the first period where Tavares touched the puck in the corner and he like sent around the boards. And then he was the next Leaf player to touch the puck and the puck was like at the other blue line. And I just watched him skate around it. And he's not even the best skater. No! He's not that fast. But he, oh, was the one, yeah. no. he was the one out there giving the most effort. And he got yeah. around the ice and he was back there and he was the next person to touch the puck. And he's, he's going to take uh, some heat. And obviously we don't know what's going on in the locker room, but I watch all the games. And I'm like, well, he seems to give a shit. Yeah. Anyway. He does. Um, I cannot actually believe we're at a point. It's, uh, it's November 17th. Yeah. Y- yesterday was November 16th. That's how math works. That's how time works. It's linear. Just tomorrow. November 18th. Oh, okay. It's wild. Just checking. And we're talking about a uh, potential Tyson Berry trade. He are we actually be, talking about that? Elliot Freeman yeah. said it in headlines that they're going to teams have him? called. Yeah. So far, the Leafs have said well, no. And they're not going to get anything for him. No, exactly. No, and it's also his camp because he's an un- unrestricted free agent at the end of this year. He's spending he's, literally millions of he's dollars. He's burning money as yep. they as uh, Myrtle was writing his her, his article as well. He's burning money every time he goes out there and he's not scoring any points. This is the, this he's is the on wild pace thing. for his worst season ever. This is the wild and, thing about him. And he was expecting a forty million dollar payday. And he's not going to get it. Eight million dollars a year. You're going to pay eight million dollars for that? You're on drugs. Yeah, you're on drugs. He's bad. There's another right-handed defenseman who I don't think is very good, but we're not allowed to talk about him, so you know, I'll skip him. The entire team stinks. They're so legitimately bad. Forget the six against. You know what? Given the circumstances, I might be able to exta- uh, understand the six against. It's Pittsburgh. Super Malkin. Super Malkin loves eating the Leafs alive. You get a goalie playing his first ever NHL game. And I don't think he ever got into one. So it's his first NHL start, but like he never even had a chance to face NHL shots like midway through the second in some game. So this is his first NHL action. They got one goal against Tristan Jari. This is uh, Jason Spezza, who's... Uh, yep. Sorry, Jay. Made the wrong decision there, pal. Who they were going to throw to the Wolves anyway. They yeah. Were just gonna let you're either go. not good enough or you're the third line center. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. That definitely makes sense, for sure. Um, they suck. The Toronto Maple Leafs suck. Legitimately suck. Right now, yeah. Jesse, they suck. They suck now and they will suck. It is not their injuries. It is not the fact that they were on the second half of a back-to-back. The Pittsburgh Penguins are missing Patrick Hornquist, Chris Letang, and Sidney Crosby. The Leafs do not have a player as good as Sidney Crosby. The Leafs do not have a defenseman as good as Chris Letang. They don't have a player as feisty as Patrick Hornquist. They suck. They frigging suck. And if they go into Vegas with the same lineup, I don't know what to tell you. They stink. That's the long and short of it, right? Like, everyone was expecting this big Nashville 9-2 blow-up. This Krusty the Clown, what the hell was that moment? Uh, they just don't give a shit. They don't give a shit. And, like, I, 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 don't, I don't feel bad for them. Y- you know, you'd see these sad puppy eyes when they gotta answer questions. Oh, you should have signed somewhere else. I... It's interesting because... It's exhausting. They're, it's exhausting. They suck. One of the things that the Leafs have been dinged for in the previous two seasons is the is possession, Corsi, um, and how it's been lower than it should be, lower than is optimal. This Maybe year, that's what it is. This year, Maybe well, they hang suck. on, hang on, hang on. Sorry. This year, it's been really good. They're in the top five in the league. Uh-huh. The issue seems to be, and I'm starting to understand the heat maps because several listeners actually reached out to me and said, hey, I can teach you. And when you look at where they're shooting... Mars. The majority of their shots are 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 three pointers, man. Mm-hmm. They're they they're way out, and I I'm questioning why when you have such down low talent like like John Tavares lives below the hash marks, um, Austin Matthews lives at the hash marks. W- Mitch Marner when he was playing, that's where he sets up plays. That's where Willie whistles it over the net or makes a really nice assist um, because that's because Willie doesn't hit the net with shots. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is where that team does really well, and it's really strange to me that that they're they're going for these limp shots. These um, muffins. Yeah, like I saw when I was watching some of the game and uh, this morning on YouTube, like some of the the clips and that sort of thing. Uh, and and actually, it's funny because I was watching. I'm like, what is this? And then I go through. I, I sometimes in the morning I'll go through like 
people's Twitter accounts and go, how did their reactions go during the game? And one of them was this Ian Tollick, who we played with uh, at Rachel's Raiders on uh, Saturday, or sorry, Friday. What a gem. And he said, yeah, he's a gem. He <laughs> said, uh, he said, does Ilya McCaff think he's got a good shot? Because he doesn't. And for some reason, he's, he's whistling it just like... Yeah, like, he came down on the wing on the left side, and he shot the puck from about the... The, uh, the top of the face circle? off dot, yeah, 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 and it was just such a it was such a poor shot. It went right to the chest. There was no point. To it. <laughs> two guys, why not have... drive the net? Listen, I love the fact that he'll drive the puck at all. Yeah, yeah. but where is and, and and so so beyond that, like bigger picture thing for just a second here. Sure, um, it's fairly clear that that this isn't going to work, right? You know, I I I, uh, I texted. What a C- great way of putting it. I I texted. This CJ. current group's not going to work. No, I texted CJ and I said, "Hey, man, should we be concerned or should we be concerned?" Yes. And he's like, "Yes." Panicked? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, listen, I I I I am. Chris Johnston is and will always be calmer than I am. Oh my god. And far more wise. He reads the Daily Stoic. Yes, he is a he's a a great guy that way. He's he's a, a nice guy to bounce things off of. But I have to say. It's a, it's 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 terrifying, looking at what this team has become, and when you, like, it's it's almost like the coaching staff is willing it to happen. It's like we're gonna we're gonna, on purpose, not do what this team needs to do to win, and and you can go in and you can tell me all day that they want to win. You can tell me all day that they think their plans are gonna work. But if this is a results based business, you're twenty five percent of the way into something and you're nine, nine and four. I'm sorry, but you can't tell me if they don't adjust that they actually do want to win. Is it do you want to win or do you want to satisfy your own ego and continue doing what you're doing? They've allowed the first goal seventeen out of twenty two games. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. And are you and, kidding? And, and let's go back to last week a little bit here too, because I'm a little frustrated with Kyle Dubas too. Yep. And I think we need to we, we need to go up. Get Even off Twitter, Kyle. Uh, first off, what is he talking about with this Cody CC stuff? His quote is, I don't understand why there's a referendum on Cody CC every mm-hmm. time he plays. You know why, Kyle? Because he's not good. I got to say, it felt pretty pointed. What do you mean, at us? I don't know. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Who that, that, Steve, I know for a fact that is not ridiculous. <laughs> I think Stephen Birch is who it's pointed at. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All wrong, Steve. I'm just giving I'm giving Birchy trouble. Uh, My bad. No, he, love you, Stephen. Uh, no, I think it's I think it's. Um, uh, I didn't. By the way, that love wasn't directed at you. Was it directed at Birch? Oh, but, I, I knew. Uh, no, but in all honesty, <laughs> um, you don't understand, Kyle, the referendum on Cody CC. And I understand you coming out and sticking up for the guy that you acquired. Totally. I get it. And it was a cat move. But you don't need to come out and say that. Are you kidding me? We all can watch this game. I know that NHL general managers are smarter than I am and better at hockey than I am. But I know enough to know that you're seeing what we're seeing. So don't pretend as though... Like, don't don't treat me like I'm an idiot. I do know enough about hockey to know that this guy's not working and that this pairing isn't working. That's That, to me, is the big thing. Like, uh, there were a few things said after the referendum quotes, um, and I I can't remember if we said this last show. I, I thought Travis Yost really nailed it. The, listen, CC was a cat move. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So they did what they had to do, whatever. But stop pretending uh, that he wasn't. The fact that Tyson Berry sucks is that's just bad staggering luck. right because that that guy that was the nasm cadre trade that's uh-huh. huge mm-hmm. and it's not enough that alex kerfoot has been actually pretty good i mean he's now hurt for the he next wasn't month. the piece in the trade we were getting back for Kadri. exactly he was the they were trading from a position of strength which was center to address a position of weakness which was right d where they had no one mm-hmm. they had no right-handed defenders of any consequence who played hockey last and they wanted year. Subban. That's right? what they wanted. And that I don't care who they wanted. They got another good one. Subban's a good one. They got another good one. Tyson Berry's a good right-handed defenseman. They got another good one, and he can't do it. The pairing, though, Adam, they've been, it's been Riley CeCe the whole season. Yeah, why can't it it's be Riley Berry? It's been Muzzenberry the whole season. And can we, all this talk about automatically um, extending Jake Muzzin, can we revisit that? He's looked horrible. For the past five games. All five consecutive losses, he's looked terrible. Well, he's been their best defenseman this year on, on both ends. Then they're in shit. Well, they are. Because none of them they look are. good. This is why we're here. Riley yeah. doesn't look good. Muzzin doesn't look good. CeCe doesn't look good. Barry doesn't look good. Dermot doesn't look good. Hall 
sometimes looks adequate. Last night I didn't think looked terribly good. Okay, so that's six. We got. We heard from. Uh, Where's I heard, Marty? I Holy from, shit! Uh, <laughs> we heard from an Avalanche fan yeah. who talk who wants to talk about. Uh, his name's Mark T. He's listened to the podcast forever. And he said, you guys are concerned about Tyson Berry's lack of production. As an Avs fan, I can tell you what I think is wrong. The issue is that in Colorado, Berry was essentially used as a rover. Uh, he had free reign to jump into the play anytime, and he was amazing at it. I genuinely think he's the best player in the league at knowing when and where to jump into the play. He's not the kind of defenseman who stands at the point and shoots. He's the kind of defenseman who sneaks down to the faceoff dot, gets open for a shot, and from what I've seen from Leaf games, that's just not how he's being deployed. He also, of course, benefited from playing a lot with McKinnon, but given the Leafs' skill, that shouldn't be a huge issue. And he's absolutely right about that. Now, Barry doesn't need power play time to do that. I think you need you need to look at that and go, that's a deployment issue. And I'm and I this is where I'm going to pull it back a little bit even further because we, we, I was a little upset with the Kyle Dubas Cody CC comment. Yep. Because again, I understand defending your guy. But don't treat the fan base and the and frankly the media like we're stupid. I'm Come gonna say on. fan base. Huh? I'm gonna say fan base. Like it, the, the, no one's needing to s- explain to anyone that CC's looked bad. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know okay. what I mean. The, so so when it comes to when it comes to management, when you look at um, if you read any books on management, there's a few ways that a manager can manage, right? And one of the ways is, uh, and even, there's actually a lot of similarities with parenting too, uh, but but one of the ways you can manage is you can be an authoritarian. You can say, uh, uh, what I say goes, and this is the way it's going to be, and I'm not even going to give you an explanation. When I say jump, you say how, how high, don't ask any questions. If you ask any questions, you're out of here. Um, or you can be authoritative. And authoritative managers expect things from you that are... Um, that are uh, in terms of, and I'm trying not to be boring here, but in terms of uh, what their expectations are, their expectations are equally as high. However, when they see a strength in you, what they will do is encourage you to follow it. And they will try to deploy you in the way, in in whatever office setting you're in, um, they will try to put you towards that thing that you're good at. You know, authoritative parenting is saying, hey, yes, that's great. Like, um, uh, it's it's really great that you're that you you, you want to do that, and I'm going to help you encourage that. But I also expect that your grades are going to be up. So, like, if you're if you're a hockey, Steve, if you're a really good hockey player, the expectation as a parent is, yeah, I'm going to drive you to every hockey practice. We'll be at every game. You're not going to miss one. But your grades better stay up too. Yep. You know, some, something like that, where yep. I'm encouraging you, but I also have expectations. Sure. And I think Babcock falls under the just not authoritative. He's an authoritarian. And I think that wears thin. And there's studies done on that where if you're if you're one of those people that's an authoritarian, you will get this much, but you'll never get more. So you'll get, say, say it's 100 percent. You'll get 100 percent for a while, but then you'll never get more. Whereas authoritative encourages growth. So you might end up getting better and better and better. And what do you do when an entire department and in this in this case, an entire team is underperforming their own skill? I don't know. Everybody's saying like there's there's people who are like, well, it's Dubis, it's this, it's that. I don't know who else you can blame other than the coaches on this one. I really don't. People could say, yeah, we need more from Riley. We need more from Matthews. We need more from whatever. I think mentally those guys are fried. I think they're done. And I think that if if Mike Babcock is not responsible for this, be it his fault or not, what is he then responsible for? What know. then can you lay at his feet? And I, I look at it and, and, and think, I think Mike Babcock did a lot of amazing things here. And I'm a fan of what he purports to be his point of view. Mike Stevens put it great in his article yesterday. You don't luck into 700 wins. No. No, you don't. You don't. He's clearly brilliant. Yeah. But they also say in a lot of studies that executives tend to lose their effectiveness after about five years. And I wonder if... He's just worn thin, and it's time for everybody else to get a different perspective in that room. We all know how mental sports are. They're mental. They're all in your head. Yep. And Mike Babcock could tell you to play defense, and after four and a half years, you might be tired. But a new guy comes in that you like, and you're like, and he goes, hey, I need you to play some defense. And all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, I'll play defense for you. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's – humans the, are weird, but that's how it works. The next coach doesn't even have to be a better coach. <laughs> He's just got to be a better motivator. Or yeah. a new voice. But that's, and I think that's what they need. I don't think they need to be that coached anymore. I don't think we need to, like, you, you could say what you want about line matching or whatever. I don't think we need to line match guys 
19 games in in overtime in Columbus. I don't think we need to do that <laughs> in overtime. Like, that's crazy to me. And that's the kind of genius brain bullshit that is, I think, holding this team back. And I don't believe that, that Mike's the guy anymore. And t- Tim, uh, sorry, Sid Sixero tweeted. He's like, I don't think Mike Babcock's going to make it to Christmas. No. I am. I, I told Steve on the on the on Queen Street today that I was shocked that I did not every every sports net notification I got, every TSN notification I got, every score notification I got. I expected to see Mike Babcock relieved of duties, and I have not seen it yet, and I'm shocked. Now we could be 20 games from now going, well, fuck, they went 15 and five. That's great, good for right. them. But, but there's been nothing to this point. That has led us to believe that that's going to happen. Is that fair? Yep, that's fair to say. Yeah. yeah. So I could be wrong in my prediction. But there's an I don't enormous. Think he's be here. There's an enormous disconnect between this coach and this GM. Uh, Leafs got Nick Batan, and it was obvious from the moment they got him, the coach didn't want him. Dubas signed him to two years. <laughs> it was clear the coach didn't want him. He signed him to two years. It was clear the coach didn't want Josh Levo. Signed that two-year deal. Or, or it was a no. It wasn't a two-year deal. It was a year ahead of time extension or right. mid-year extension. Despite the fact that the guy wasn't even getting played. Finally played him the next season, but like that season where it was signed, he wasn't getting played. Yeah. Jake Muzzin. Opening, your first words on this player, this two-time Stanley Cup champion, or one time, he was definitely there for the 2014 team. Stanley Cup champion. He's got as many cups as Babs. Mm-hmm. Only one. And he talks about how he's not a right-handed shot. The Leafs go out and get a right-handed shot. Mm-hmm. And he's driving them and through he can't, the mud. And he can't, de- he can't deploy them. By the way, it looks like Muzzin did play. In 2012? Um, yeah. I want to say he was... He's pretty he pl- young. Yeah, he was young. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, we knew Babcock was never going to play Spezza after the first preseason game. We knew that. Mm-hmm. You heard the first quote, you're like, oh, he's done. Lo and behold, we're mid-November, he's done. He's done. He's in the lineup because he has to be. The platoon's over. They stopped that. All those tickets for the home opener, like, we, we knew. We knew. Ty goes to the veteran. What? Okay, so he gets home opener. Nope. We knew. There's a disconnect between this coach and this GM. One thing that's troubling, too, is that they refuse to change any of the systems because you see they're running out the same power play unit the same way they're trying to deploy everybody i'm a the moron heat maps look this, like like the heat i max... shouldn't know what's coming right. and i know every time the leafs have the puck mm-hmm. i know exactly what's coming so does everyone else drop pass, i'm not drop smart pass, drop pass. Right. Oh, holy shit the heat maps have been so trendy on twitter this season because every game it's so it's so staggering ice how they, fucking cold how they look <laughs> the exact same and how you see all the shots are coming from the point and how it's not working the other team always looks like oh they have all their shots from the middle of the ice and then every game everyone's always like look at this heat map because it's it's the shocking. literal the literal definition of insanity right it's the same thing every single time every single time and defensive like we're just talking about scoring chances which they used to be able to score their way out of problems now they can't um, defensively, they're happy to give up the point and collapse down low. And even though there was one goal the other day, I think it was against Boston, all five Leafs were in the slot. <laughs> all five of them. There were three Bruins in the zone. Bruins came out with the puck and scored a goal. They had two shots. They had two attempts at it. It was the Brad, one of the Brad Marchand ones. Mm-hmm. One of them. Huh? I have trouble, They suck! Yeah, and I have trouble blaming Dubis for any of this because he's trying. You know, he, he's he, doing, he did shit. He's doing his half of the job where it's just like, I'm going to go, I'm going to keep trying stuff until this works. He trades away Kadri. He's trying to, he, even if he goes and gets CC for, a, it's a cap move, at least he's trying something, but he you wouldn't, know? He, but, but I think you're right in the sense that, do you think that he got Cody CC thinking, yeah, this is at our top four? But he didn't. He didn't think that, but at least he's trying something, you know? And all of you, like, don't don't you feel a little silly for being like, oh, yeah, Dermot's going to play with Riley? What? When? I thought. What? Not under this coach. Yeah. I guess I'm silly. You are. Yeah. I am silly. And you I'm are. silly Billy. You were all silly for thinking that this team, the, the, the least imaginative uh, coaching staff in hockey, mm-hmm. uh, was ever going to do something different. Yeah. When, when Dubas went out and got CC, he didn't... Dubas isn't saying that CeCe's going to be out there for the penalty kill versus the Penguins in the first period and not be able to clear the puck and it lead directly to a goal. 
Like, right. that's not on Dubis acquiring CeCe. No. That's on the coach putting him on the PK and then putting him out there in the first 25 seconds of the penalty kill yeah. and him not being able to clear a puck. And you can't tell I also, me, you sorry. can't tell me that, like, all these people now, especially, like, I gotta be, I gotta be honest with you, Damian Cox is just on a shit heater. <laughs> just bad tweet after bad tweet after bad tweet. And and he was he was like, well, you know, at a certain point, you got to blame the GM for the players he brought in. Are you going to tell me for real that you thought Tyson Berry was going to play like this? Come on. Are you serious? No. Kyle Dubas, I, I, can, I have my issues w- with that, that comment about Cody Ceci, but he objectively improved this team. And he has consistently over the years he's yes. been here. Since and, he's and, taken over for Luke. And anybody that thinks that, that okay, yeah, he may maybe pay too much for the restricted free agents, but look at the shitty contracts he wrangled himself out of, out from under. Mm-hmm. That Lou Lamorello signed. Yep. And I look at this, I look at this and think, okay, so at what point now? And I love this person, so this is hard. At what point is Brendan Shanahan culpable? At, uh, immediately. And 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 I ask that because Kyle Dubas said. In the press conference last year, towards the, remember the, the 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 finishing press conference, mm-hmm. right? Where he was like, uh, he's like, you know, we had a Mike. Mike and I had a really good, first off. He said in the first week, he said everybody's under review. Yep. Then he comes back the next week and goes, Mike and I had a great talk. He's gonna he's gonna look at evolving. And it's I, always a great talk with this frigging guy, <laughs> whether it's his star player or his GM. Holy shit, we're done. Stop. Yes, Adam? So anyway, I was going to say that it sounded like, to me anyway, that the first comment was more truthful than the second. The first comment was, everybody's under review. The second comment was, I had to keep him, so I better say something good. I mean, the guy just came out and and laid himself under a bus for Cody Cece. So, of course, he's going to say, I had a positive I had a positive talk with Mike. It does it, it does Kyle Dubas or the, and the Leafs no good service to say we're not on the same page. And they're, imagine they're, he said uh, that. Now, imagine he'd been truthful. And one thing that's been debated is is does he have permission to fire Mike Babcock? Absolutely not. And they and and it's been reported that he does have the authority to. I he assume had that's it written a lie. into his contract when he signed it that he has authority. Is that, is that what's been reported? Yeah, yeah. Shannon, John Shannon, Shannon uh, tweeted it back in six months ago. So what was, what was that? Like I don't May? believe it. May, as she John. says, to I clarify a discussion yesterday on Primetime Sports, multiple sources have confirmed that Kyle Dubas has the authority as GM to dismiss Mike Babcock. That he does not you. need approval from the board. So, it doesn't go with the rumor that he asked Shanahan at the end of the season to fire Babcock, and Shanahan says no. Then it's on Kyle Dubas. Then it has to be. He's got to look at this and know. And if, if, listen, if, if, here's the question. If Brendan Shanahan is standing in the way, Steve made a really good point on Friday at Hockey, you know, you, that I want you to repeat here, which is if, if this is the case, if, if Shanahan is standing in the way, what does that make the Leafs power structure wise? Every stupid hockey team ever. Explain that. So what we've talked about <laughs> is, well, it's true. What we've talked about so many times. And the theme that we find with the bad hockey teams we love to talk about, uh, the Oilers previously, for example, um, trying to think of other examples, maybe the Canucks in mm-hmm. there. Um, we don't know who's in charge or the GM is not the GM. The GM doesn't get the final say. The GM doesn't get to build their team. Now, Jesse had a good point to that, though, which That's was... Time. It, it, I look at it as the way the Raptors have their power structure, as it's Masai is the ultimate decision maker. Right. Bobby Webster, which many people don't know, including yourself up until they won the NBA championship. <laughs> yeah, I literally <laughs> went to NBA uh, Finals Media Day and like, and now bringing out Raptors general manager Bobby Webster. And I said, who? And mm-hmm. also GM? Yeah. I thought that was Masai. Yeah, Bobby Webster is general manager of the Toronto Raptors and Masai is the president, even though... Masai is essentially has the authority of the GM. Yes. And all of the the last say decision making there. Yeah, it's not like I don't think Bobby Webster called San Antonio and said, How what are we gonna do about Kawhi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you're he if, might have, if, like, it goes down in the books that GM Bobby Webster made the Kawhi trade. Uh, but we, that's their power. We structure. don't look at it in history that way at no, all. No, no, no. <laughs> we look at it as uh Masai Ujuri made this decision. <laughs> so I wonder if 
Kyle Dubas, even though he has this authority, even Shannon reports that, hey, he can fire <gasps> Babcock at any time if he goes to Shanahan and Shanahan's like, no, don't do this. He's like, I'm going to listen to him more than I'm going to make this decision on my own. Mm. And who knows if the Maple Leafs, even though Dubas is the outside face, if he isn't still in that role that Bobby Webster is in the Raptors. Mm-hmm. Where, where, where he does the groundwork, they're across but the not the final decisions. Other, you know? Right, yes. <laughs> I, I would assume there's some crossover there. Maybe MLSC has set it up so Shanahan does have the ultimate decision, just like Masai Ujiri, but just towards the media, it appears that Dubas has more of a role than he actually does. Yeah. I, I I'm know. just, just going to say, I don't believe that they speak that often. That's yeah, true. I but, don't believe it. Huh? Like, I just... You know what? You know what else bad teams do all the time, Adam? Talk, say stuff. Stop saying stuff. Give me a winning hockey team, or I don't want to hear it. I'm I'm so done. I'm really done. The the this the fan base just getting their heads dunked in a toilet over and over again. By you other see fan many, bases. By other fan bases. <laughs> and, and you see how many deserve it. Yeah, we do deserve <laughs> yep. it. Yep. You know? yeah. Islanders fans. <laughs> Yuck, yuck, yuck. Oilers fans, even though you weirdos have not played the Leafs in many, many months, yuck, yuck, yuck. Just everybody. Bruins fans, Marshan, lifting a trophy on our ice, winking on Twitter. Oh, fuck yeah. You bunch of losers. You perennial forever losers. I really can't stand this hockey team. (laughs) And it's my entire life. I've hitched my wagon to this. Thank God you named your book what you named it. Yeah. Yep. It's like, this team is alleviating all the pain in my life. It's been a very inaccurate uh, title for Being Steve's a book. Lease fan is stress free. Yeah. By Steve Dangle. Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. No, we're going to we do. We compile a list of, of yeah. inaccurate Steve Dangle book titles. <laughs> very fun. If we had a live show, I'd be like, let's get that trending. Let's yeah. go. We're, we're going to do. We're going to do. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to read from our quote, quote of the day calendar and preach positivity. And uh, be patient because we know better than you. Okay, guys, keep it up. Does it keep Babcock, it up? Have a fun road trip. Does Babcock make it to Christmas? I hope not. Yeah. Hmm. I hope not. Well, Adam made a funny statement on, on our way in here. He goes, "Well, you can't fire a coach on the road. You bet your balls, you can." Yeah. Well, here's the problem. You can fire him over the phone. You, you can do. You can do whatever you want. You can you in can. this life. You can. You can do everything at least once. You better have a plan. Yeah. Yep. And. If they don't have one, they deserve everything they're getting. Sure. I would agree with that. I like the idea of just keep pushing this. Because the further you push it, if they play even worse, then the hole just gets it gets deeper. And then Dubas just looks better, right? And if he does it too early and they don't, <laughs> I don't turn know about around, that. the deeper it goes, the better he looks. Because then it's more on Babcock. Does, is oh, it I don't know about that. Well, uh, here, there was, a, there was a really, really good point. I like there were there were a bunch of tweets last night that like challenged my thought process. I really liked them. From Michael Tracos. If I'm Dubis, I wouldn't fire Babcock. After what the GM went through each of the past two summers, I wouldn't let the players off that easily. No way. This is their mess to clean up. He's not wrong. That's a good point. He's not wrong. Screw I, you guys. I also think I'm, oh, are you kidding me? I also think um when you look at what, how they're playing, they're playing low event hockey. Mm-hmm. For a highly skilled team, I, I think on that alone, yeah, okay, it's fine. It's the players' mess to keep, to clean up. Sure, uh, I don't disagree with Michael on that. I guess the question is, what's more of the problem here? And I think more of the problem is the style that they're playing. I was talking to Berkshire uh, this weekend, and I said, "So are they actually terrible?" And he said, "Well, they're bad. There's no question." Yeah. He said, "But it's he said it's not a talent thing." And to me. When you have the talent and you're not getting the results, it has to go on to the person that's managing the talent. I mean, like you, you probably could, should have about, fired that guy you were thinking about firing. A team that cannot break the cycle, like eight, no, and I'm talking about the cycle in their own zone, has never been able to do. They're a really tough watch. They are, and that's the thing. Here's the other thing, dude. They're a bad hockey. The team. the interesting like, thing to watch is what do you want? Um, is the reaction on Twitter, uh, and and on Instagram and on everything else. Because it's not, it's not just that the Leafs have lost. The Leafs were playing every game, and there and it was a remember the the tire fire games that they played against New York and Chicago and whatever last season and the season before. 
if they were winning and losing every game 8-5... And it was exciting. It was like, whoa, don't yeah. know which way this is going. This is fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. And, their, and their record was the same. Mm-hmm. People would be like, well, live by the sword, die by the sword. But they're playing such bad hockey. It's so boring yeah. that it's creating apathy. They it's had so... an identity before. Yes. It's we're fast and fun and score a shitload of goals and unfortunately give up a bunch. Now their identity is they're bad. Their identity is they are bad at hockey. It's and, and what's <laughs> that's what, their identity. They what, suck. What do you watch sports for? Fun, <laughs> entertainment. Fun. Yeah. Don't fun, I look fun, like I'm having some fun entertainment? Right. Yeah. So if you're playing a hockey team, if you're putting together a hockey team that's super fun on paper, mm-hmm. and then you're playing boring hockey, you're going actively against the grain of the whole point of sport in general, which is to be exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, what you should definitely do is uh, then bench a 37-year-old in your uh, home opener. <laughs> I, don't think I don't really think that matters. I he's, he's the worst <laughs> people manager in the league. Uh, like, I just, we, we're done here. Please fire him. I'm done. <laughs> I'm so done. I'm so done. I don't want to, I don't give a shit about your Italian sausages. That's how he plays everyone like a fiddle. Eh? I love Babcock when he's not talking about hockey. When I he's mean... not talking about hockey, he sounds like a riot. When he talks about hockey, I want to <clears> friggin' <throat> vomit. Your last cup was 2009. It was 10 years ago. It is out of date knowledge. What do you do at this point about Tyson Berry? What do you do? Well, not trade him. Well, if you request a trade, you might not have a choice. Because that's what (sighs) it seems like that everybody's kind of leaking the notion that his camp is unhappy. Well, Well, I also think, remember too, and hang on to that thought. Sure. When general managers know that a team is underperforming, they start leaking shit about. They call. Oh, yeah. So the oh, so it yeah. seems like the sharks are swirling. Remember okay. that Elliot did not hear that from the Leafs. He got that There's from no other chance. GMs who have called. Right. No and and that's the point is that they're uh, they're the Leafs. Based on what we saw with Nylander last year, the Leafs will will let Barry walk before they'll trade him under value. Okay. So how would you rate yourself as gift giver? Man, startlingly adequate. Okay. Yeah. What's the actual? What's the reaction you normally get from Mrs. Dangle on Christmas Day? She's usually pretty stoked. Okay. I got her dog calendars. Okay. Vicky and Charlie, so like, it's pretty easy. <laughs> Jesse, what about you? I love giving gifts. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Really? Too. Yeah, yeah. You are Santa Claus. You're good That's at it, too. Yeah, I think so. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure about you guys, but I always get this little bit of anxiety around this time of year because, because yes, it's Christmas, but it also means I got to get out and shop and think of things. And the, the problem is, it's never the shopping itself. Once I have the list, I'm excited. But it's the narrowing down of the list that is such a pain. Mm. Yes. And you're never sure who to ask. Because if you ask certain members, like say you're, you're going out with somebody. If you ask certain members of the family, which I have done with my wife, and those certain members of the family are terrible at keeping secrets, guess who knows what they're getting before they get it. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and, and same for her with me. And that's why... Thoughtful, uh, thoughtful. The app is is something that you're going to want to consider. So this is a new app. It's is that, based... a, that another meditating app? <laughs> it is not. It's not. It is. What not. is it? It's an app where you can go on, purchase a gift, and it's thoughtful with two L's, by the way. Um, you go on, you can purchase gifts, but they what they do is they categorize things. So you go on, and it's like, well, who are you shopping for? First off, let's get to that. And and essentially, it's like, well, uh, my mother-in-law, and then it'll bring up a curated list of great gifts for your mother-in-law. Oh, and that's oh, great. That's oh, cool. that's great. It gives me a bunch of ideas. Fantastic. But here's the other part. It delivers same day. So let's say you're as terribly planned as Steve and I, yes. and you forgot, and your mother-in-law is coming, and you're doing Christmas early, or you're doing Hanukkah early, or you're doing whatever it is early. You're doing it early. And you're like, God, I need a gift today. Now. Now! Thoughtful is the app that can actually do that for you. And here, the, the best part about it is What's the best part thoughtful of assistant. It, it it goes into you know not only do you get same day delivery, but you're getting a really great gift that is curated by a gift assistant. They have thoughtful assistants that are, that curate these lists like you would a playlist on on Spotify. And it's the idea is everything that they have is experience based or meant to make the person feel amazing. How so, thoughtful? <laughs> ha with two L's. Thoughtful. But in all honesty, and it's, three the, C's. it's a super easy way to shop this 
you know, this season and, and any other season after this. It's not just available at Christmas now. It just launched. It is a Toronto startup. So it's kind of cool oh, to see. Oh, it's cool. It's local. Yeah. That's so it's, awesome. like one of like, it's like a local thing, which is super cool as well. So it's just launched in Toronto. Uh, it's coming to the rest of the country and internationally eventually. Uh, but they're starting it here. They're starting it now. And we thought you should know about it. So you should check out their gift lists. You nice. should download the Thoughtful app. It's Thoughtful, F-U-L-L. Uh, all one word. Um, and they're all about making whoever you're buying a gift for feel special and experience something amazing with you. That's the thing. It's to make gifting memorable, gifting made easy. Be thoughtful. Check out the Thoughtful app in your app store, Toronto area residents. Boom! And now, back to the show. <laughs> to kind of to wrap this up, because I don't want to talk in circles about this. Yeah, let's not do that. This, this team is playing poorly, <laughs> done, right? but it's also boring. At least when they were bad before, intentionally, they played fun hockey. You still enjoyed watching it. And there was nothing to lose. It was like, hey, whatever, we're probably going to finish last, but who cares? Um, now it's it's there's a little bit of pressure, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the team is playing some of the worst on in terms of entertainment value. Like the WWE Certainly. has a – they have a system – Behind the scenes, and we should talk to Eric Young about this. Actually, yes, oh, we have him on. I'd love to talk to him just about how like they write those scripts oh, and everything. Totally. Yeah. It, well, he's, scripts. He he talks Different. about. Oh man, there's some. <laughs> there's a yeah. There's I'm not even gonna wreck the story. There's some great stuff he's he's told me behind the scenes that I've been like, okay. wow. And I don't even think he knew it was as cool as it was. All right. But you're talking about an organization that's completely based on entertainment value, right? That's all they do: entertainment, entertainment, mm -hmm. entertainment, and it's athletic. But it's entertainment. At the end of the at the end of the day, none of this really matters. It no. should just be entertainment. None of this matters. Yeah. It's, what it's is all that? bullshit. It's an so athletic endeavor. So sure. the Leafs are playing what what the WWE would re lo it would be a it would be a it, it's a match that's bad and boring. It could be bad but exciting. Mm -hmm. But you can't be dull and bad. You can't. The Leafs are that, and it's I believe it's time for change. Go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Uh, uh like it, all the way down to everything. I. I don't like the way they play. I don't like what they're doing on offense. I don't like what they're doing on defense. I don't like their goal song. I don't like that with two minutes to go in a close game, they play that same stupid bell music that they like. I literally remember games from my childhood where that was the the uh oh, it's getting down to it time. Everything about this team that I thought was changed a few years ago is tired and old and boring. And bad at hockey. Fair enough. Uh, it's just, it's that meme where you freaking take the bag off the head and just reveal the old logo. Yeah. You stink. Yep. And you made us all think you didn't. J.D. Bunkus had a great tweet last night. I hope the Raptors took their championship ball back from the Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> also, anyone who is still watching the Leafs at the one that hit 5-1 in the second, how dare you? Yeah, stop doing that. The Raptors yourself. were on a couple channels up. Switch yeah. it over. Unless, yeah, unless oh, no. you're getting paid. What are you doing? Don't watch <laughs> oh, that. My like, Steve has to. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah. no. Dude, I switched it. The, the, the next Leaf, they're going to be like, all right, so we're going to... Here, wait, sorry. <laughs> Hey, we're, we're going to give this to... The, the ball's covered in dust. It's not even orange by the, anymore. By the way, I, I doubt that's even the, the Raptors championship basketball. No, <laughs> I they doubt just, highly. <laughs> highly. Yeah, because highly they don't talk to Masai. <laughs> All this, oh, yeah. Just, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Like, stop stop with this, this, this overly positive team-building bullshit that I don't believe. Stop. They don't know... I think... I feel like they don't know how to relate to, like... This generation, you know, who the Leafs? I like, like I I don't think the organization. Yeah, like they're younger players. I don't. I I feel like it's old, and they're ignoring it. There, there's something. It's noise. What is it about the tone of the way they speak that makes me want to puke? I'm trying hmm. to figure that out. Well, they 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 talk like hockey players have always talked. You mean the players? Uh, no, the, it's not management? quite like that. Management, management. Oh, management. There's something about it where I'm like, ugh, just ugh. Stop. I don't. Think, I don't think you feel that way if they're winning. Yeah. Also that. No. I think it feels a little more authentic if they're winning. No. Yeah. No. This <laughs> this has been. It's a thing. It's something I wouldn't comment on if they were winning, but it. I've felt this for a while, where they, they'll say the oh positive steady on the rudder. It's Babcock stuff. It's Duba stuff. It's Shanahan stuff. I'm, I'm just like shut up. 
Shut up. Well, I think they have a system in plan in place that they're trying to hold to. And I think if it was working, it'd be working. And it'd be a great mentality to have. If mm-hmm. it was going from like top down, this is our stand by this road and we're gonna go. And if it was working, it'd look genius. Yeah. But right now it's not. Yeah. I think that's yeah. probably the issue there. Well, and and uh, so we'll see what happens in the next 20 games. But if the 20-game mark was the litmus test, which mm-hmm. is what, what it's supposed to be, they failed miserably. They oh, sucked yeah. spectacularly. Uh, um, one final stat. I think yeah, give fun. it to us. If the Leafs want to finish with 100 points from here on out, they will have to go 35, 17, and 8, or Ooh. equivalent. That's from James Myrtle. They are fucked. 100 points remember how much squeak I, them remember, into the playoffs. Remember how I told you <laughs> how important the first 20 games were? Remember how I mentioned that and you guys made fun of me? Remember? No, they're super important. I don't and how they're... it really will determine whether you're in the playoffs or not? They're but not going to make the playoffs. They you may can, not. You could be last place in January. They're going to miss the playoffs. Cup. They missed the playoffs, and imagine they missed the playoffs, but their pick is still not in the top 10, so it's not protected. <laughs> J- <laughs> J- J.D. <laughs> JD Bunkus uh, tweet of the night, the, the Dubas' best move of the offseason might have been protecting that pick. <laughs> Fuck. Mm-hmm. Why? Why them? Why them? You know how many teams I could I could cheer for? Listen, 30 others. Tampa missed There's the playoffs. There's 30 a other years teams ago too. I could have cheered for. What? Tampa missed the playoffs a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Now Stan wow. was out the entire oh, year. Shut All right. <laughs> no, no, no. That team stunk because every player of theirs was injured. And ben this Bishop is different. Wasn't great that year either. This is different. And they missed by one point. One lousy point. Tampa's also sitting below the Leafs in standings, if you didn't know. With games in hand. Yeah, They've but... played. Go look at how many fewer games they've played. 17 to 22, but still, that doesn't destroy they have my point. Five games in hand on this bunch of turkeys. Oh my God. This is me. Like, I guess what you're seeing is me making peace with the fact that the Leafs suck and will miss the playoffs the year I said they would win the cup. You think they're going to miss the playoffs? Um, the lesson learned here is uh, do not. Reward people with your optimism when they don't deserve it. Um, <laughs> they don't. They don't. So let's. What talk. a what a just a shit hockey team. So oh my god. Okay. Oh so my god. It, all right. Moving on now. I we're can't now believe they're doing Steve. this we're again. Moving on now. We're moving on now. Uh, Not, got, the Leafs aren't. Okay. <laughs> moving on from what? Moving on. Moving on from what? They're gonna ice the same friggin' lineup in Vegas. <laughs> moving on from what? Yes, Adam. Uh, Ron McLean addressed more in the um, in the coach's corner spot. Uh, he did go off script. I believe I don't believe there actually was. A well, that I he, don't think there was. He went off and I had wondered if it was recorded, but it definitely wasn't. No. Mm-hmm. So he basically, you know, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, the clip is four and a half minutes long. Um, and National television. There was what's that? National television. Four and a half minutes. No scriptless. co-host, scriptless. That's wild, man. That's wild. I don't think it was a great idea. No, hmm. that's interesting. I thought. Um, here's the thing: if you saw that clip from last night and didn't see Sunday's apology, I can understand how you're upset. Okay, so if you if saw you, that clip, if you haven't seen, if you heard about Sunday's yeah, apology but yeah. didn't see it. Then I can see how you're upset with what happened last night. I think, hmm. I think personally, um, that Ron McLean's. If to me, if you're questioning whether Ron McLean is sincere in his in him being sorry about what happened last Saturday night, I think you're insane at this point. I think you're just one of those people that is is literally just not going to be reasoned with. Well, he, he looks like he's ready to cry. Genuinely like, sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. And genuinely upset. And. Is he going to go on Hockey Night in Canada now with that segment and not pay homage to what Don Cherry, um, with all of his faults, accomplished? Listen, you can hate Don Cherry forever. That's not my business, how you react to Don Cherry's legacy. I don't even blame you. And I don't blame you. I don't even blame you. The reality, though, is Don Cherry was a massive, rightly or wrongly, in your opinion, it doesn't matter, either way a massive cultural figure in this country for a very, very long time. I think what Ron tried to do last night was pay homage to that, mm-hmm. which I think is, and to be honest friend. with you... his friend. And his friend. And the fact that they had 
a massive disagreement in in the in the papers. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that Don felt betrayed. I mean, they worked it, together for years. They called him a traitor. Yeah, like, like it was it was rough. This this is a rough week. However, uh, if I'm going into a segment like that and I've got something to say. I'm writing it down and I'm following the script. And the reason I'm going to do uh, that is because I found I found what Ron, I know what Ron was trying to say, but I don't think he fully said it. And I think when you go on and you just want to have a talk, if you don't have somebody there, it's very easy to lose your place. It felt like uh, he was well. conducting an interview with himself. Does that make sense? It sounded like he was trying to answer the questions that he thought people were asking about the situation. And I think it was... It was the right thing to say, but it was the wrong, wrong place. Like, I don't know if, it, if that if because it's, he clearly wanted to conduct an interview about the situation that happened. But I don't know if you do it at that moment. The first coach's corner after the not a coach's corner, the first segment after what happened. That was and the then, last coach's corner, technically. Technically. Yeah. And then you also I don't know if you do it by yourself. No. You know, I feel no. like maybe you sit down and you have this talk. Should and, he have had like. Like Dave Amber ask him questions yeah, or something like that. I don't, I don't like think that? it even. I don't think it should have been a hockey person. I think he should have gone to a media outlet and sat down and just conducted an interview because yeah. it sounded like that's what he was trying to do with himself in four minutes. But you got to put he, something there because he me yes you right. do. But he he like meandered. It was from it was and and Ron speaks in flourishes. It's this mm -hmm. you know he paints when he speaks and that's what's made him so talented. But what I found was there was a lot of paint, not a lot of picture, and and the I think. I don't, I don't hate what he was trying to do. He was talking about the democratization of media. Yeah. He's talking about how people hold him to account. And those are all true things. He was talking about Don Cherry, his friend, somebody who's accomplished a lot in his career, also true things. But you have to have at five minute, at the five minute mark, you got to have something where you're, where are you taking us? Mm -hmm. What's the overall sentiment here? And that's what I thought was lacking from it. That wasn't lacking on Sunday when he was prepared with an apology and ready to go. And listen... If you want me, and there were people who, like you had Damian Cox, just who has just been in his element. There are people. There are there are broad, there horrible. are bitter broadcasters in this country who don't like Ron McLean. Fine, fine. By the way, Damian and Ron never really worked together on Hockey Night in Canada because he was there the Stromboli years. I'll, I'll but, just I'll just straight up say that uh, when I was behind the scenes at Hockey Night in Canada, um, whenever I saw him in the studio, he was sitting there talking to no one. There, I've thrown it experience. out there. There it is. Um, uh, that's not Ron, that is, you're saying. Um, no, Damien. So, there are people in this country, in media, who don't like Ron. There are people, obviously, in social media who don't like Ron now, after all of this. Mm -hmm. The reality is, if you want me, personally, to jump on the Ron, McC Ron McLean uh, uh, is cancelled train or whatever, I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I think that Ron is doing the absolute best that he can. Um, you can criticize him as I just did. I don't think it was, I don't think it was a particularly effective moment in his career when it needed to be. Hmm. Uh, but I thought his apology last Sunday was very effective mm -hmm. and, uh, and earnest. And so you, you, you take the good with the bad with people. Nobody's completely perfect and nobody's a perfect broadcaster. Ron is not. And it, there... all I care about in this is that, okay, he made the apology. He was wrong. We got it. Okay. Now he sort of wants to honor Don's legacy. How do you do that? I got to tell you, I don't think last night was the time. No, mm. it, even when, when he concluded it, I got a text from uh, my sister who was also watching. And she was like, I felt like he was leading into like a tribute video for Don Cherry. Yeah. It felt like he was he was doing this thing. He was going to lead and there was going to be like some sort of tribute. And I was like, what is happening? And then it just kind of ended and it went to commercial. It was, it was, very, it was a little odd, definitely, because mm -hmm. I think, like you said, he didn't really have a plan. What's the point? Right. That was the question to me. What was your point? So it was it, it, it meandered from the, the reaction to last week to how we hold them to account to Don and his relationship to Don's legacy to what? Do you feel like they should have just left it? It's yes. Not given them they that should have platform. Moved on. Yeah. This was it. This was the time. You know what? This was to me. There's nothing to be gained here. The best you can hope for in Ron's position in that moment. And this is just me talking is zero. If Ron McLean right. had fucking knocked it out of the park last night in that four and a half minute segment, you're at zero. That's a cannot win situation. This Don't is... put yourself in it. Move on. Yeah. Move headlines up. Do a feature on a player in the second intermission. Go. Get on with it. This is hard for me as a Sportsnet employee, man. Like, 
But you, you can talk. You it can just talk sucks about content. so hard. Dude, no, we, I know. We know he's a Jesse's a former Sportsnet employee within the of last course, year. Of course, of course. Um, I, I, I know a lot of the people there. I'm not criticizing the organization. I just think, I, I, I just wasn't blown away by. It. I just wasn't. And that's fair. It was. I was just. I don't know. I got caught up in, uh, the uniqueness of it, mm-hmm. the uniqueness of the moment, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I. I I felt like I was watching a time capsule. As an event, it's unprecedented, uh-huh. and it's something that goes down in history. Yeah, like, just like, this whole this whole week does. Yeah, I've oh my god, yeah, and, like and and again, Americans, like I don't expect you to fully understand because, uh, like, when was the last, or how often does it happen? Um, I guess what like in unless it's a, a like a news tragedy or something. How often is everyone watching the same thing? Right. And it's live and it's one person talking. It's like, and it's not the president. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like it was, I was, I was, I I kept going in and out of actually listening because I was. trouble removing yourself just from the spectacle of the event I was going on. I was just like, what am I watching? Right, right. Like I, I, I'm watching. I'm watching a man in 2019 talk to probably the biggest audience he's spoken to in years um, for four and a half minutes straight by himself. And I, and I, I, I guess similar to what you were saying, Adam, like kept finding myself going, boy, there's no win here. And there were times, <laughs> there were times where I was like, wow, that was extremely eloquent. Wow. That was the right thing to say. And also where are we going here? And feeling bad for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there were... And I do. I do. It's I, interesting. I, I think it was an awful It's interesting week. that you say um, how, like, it didn't go anywhere, which I I don't think you're really off base there. But it was, it was funny seeing a lot of the reaction was really black and white. And... I don't think people know how to, how to have anything else. Yeah, it, <laughs> that didn't make any sense to me. Like, like his praise of decades of work with his friend negates his apology. It, no, that's not. Ron no. does <laughs> not. Like, you're, people were acting like him talking positively about Don meant condoning what, what he said, said, which if no. you'd listened to, to either of those broadcasts, the apology or last night, if you listened to either, you would know that he doesn't. So, or I, if you followed his career to this point, here's the difference, guys. The difference is Don Cherry had 30 years of shitty things piled up. We saw that interview floating around this week when he said, you know, from 1990, I am a nationalist. I speak to the guys who drink beer, these foreigners who come here and they get all the good pay and dough. That's what he says in the interview. Which has been floating around. That uh, interview is from 1990. Don Cherry has 30 years of this. Ron McLean has was, been nothing. That was two Iraq wars ago. Nothing but an ambassador. <laughs> nothing but a great ambassador for the sport and for the broadcast. Now, did I, I, again, like I said, did I think that he did a great job last night? No, I don't think it was great. I think, and on, I, I don't know how anybody ultimately could be great in that position, which is why I wouldn't have put him in that position. I understand him wanting to pay homage to that, but let the dust settle a little bit and then maybe talk about it later. I didn't think... There was no win for them. And and so when people say, like you said, and I'm bringing it back to this, when you when people say, oh, well, him paying homage to Don Cherry is him negating his own apology. That's absolutely ridiculous. The two have nothing to do with each other. It's a fallacy of an argument. And if you look, if you f- study actual argument, that's not an argument. You read a lot of stuff. Well, it's just crap. That's just <laughs> that's no. that's crap. No. And, and so, listen, if you want to be mad, be mad. If you want to rage rage like i, 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 I say think this. i think it's just just why don't you just say this i'm fucking pissed off and which right is now, legitimate. i'm not ready to hear an apology fine legitimate but don't tell me that he doesn't mean that he's sorry yeah that's also garbage and you know that if if you're still pissed off at him i get it fine yeah. if you're pissed off with the fact that don and and you know dave bedini's article was really great about and i think we need to shout that out again why we accepted this for so long yep um Please read that article. You know we should tweet that out and maybe link to it in our in our in our uh, YouTube video. Uh, we'll have Steve 
Yeah, I don't know the title. Oh, but okay. it, well, yeah. it, it came out like the day after he yeah, was fired. I, uh, Tuesday? Is it about why no. we accept Wednesday? Don, why we accepted for so long Don Cherry stuff, right? Wednesday. And that's so I, I guess my my point in all of this is saying um, that I think if you even if, if if Ron had been perfect last night, there'd still be people who'd be like, screw you, man. And yep. And they're not wrong. Uh, but at the same time, you can't tell me that A, Ron McLean's a racist, or B, Ron McLean isn't sorry. That is also not true. I'm not jumping on the cancel Ron McLean bandwagon. That's crap. Uh, Ron McLean needs to be better. He said that. So give him a chance to be better. And, uh, and Don, Don, Don made Don's bed. Don's been doing this for years. Don got exactly what he wanted. And the audience grew up around him and changed and don used to be able to get away from that get away with that stuff because a his ratings were freaking massive and b there was no social media yeah the, the outrage was like a few people write a few letters that show up a couple weeks later when it's already blown over you don't gotta wonder how people reacted to it you know right you don't gotta go oh my god did you hear that oh they heard that that's what it is now i can't feel bad for don cherry he got exactly what he wanted now i don't know any of the behind the scenes decision making like when i went to sportsnet I was in CBC this past week, and I was in Sportsnet this past week, and I just kept going, quiet week, everyone? Mm -hmm. And we'd laugh, and we'd continue to walk through our haze, <laughs> because yeah. it was a pretty surreal uh, week. I don't know what their strategy was. I do think it was right to have Ron McLean on there by himself, or not, not that it was right, um, but Ron, whose name is already Mud to a lot of people right now, right? He gets on there and anyone, anyone, like imagine they put, uh, you know, Dave Amber, Elliot Friedman, Chris Johnston, Brian Burke. They just throw that panel in there. All of a sudden, all their names are mud because they're taking the spot. I don't think so. I don't think people, so, Steve. I think, I think that's how people look I, at it. I know. I think that's one segment of, and a very small segment of the population. Right. I think that this huh? issue is not as split as people think. I don't, um, know. I, I, I don't know. I saw. I saw I, I the just, protest outside of Rogers. I think. I think. The oh, amount, I wanted to get that poor lady subway uh, tokens. The amount of people, CBC fake news. You're six stops off, lady. The, Sorry, what? The point here, Steve, is that I don't think that. I I really have to tell you, I don't really think that their actual audience, their core audience, would think that. No, I, I really think if don't. you throw something hockey just in there, I don't think people associate that with Coach's Corner anymore. There was another dude. Like, like, the, this is the type of week that we had. There was a dude who parked a school bus, an actual school bus, on the curb outside of Sportsnet Studios. Uh -huh. The school bus had a wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing tube man on top of it. I went, as and one he was for blaring the clip over and over again. The Don Cherry quote? Yeah, the you people quote. The one he, guy? Because he supported him I or didn't support him? Adam, I don't know. Someone... And this uh, is just one guy. Yeah, someone oh. defaced an epitaph for veterans. Yeah. Supposedly epitaph. in support of Don Cherry. <laughs> and got arrested for it. Um, it <laughs> has idiot. been one of the most surreal weeks in recent memory. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to feel about it. Well, I, I just feel like, I feel like this week was the eat shit week. Yeah. And next week is when we begin anew. I'm excited I, yeah. to see what they do with the segment next week. This week, whether it was well executed or not, you know, we can have that debate. I feel like Ron should have been in that this week, and now it's done. Mm -hmm. Now it's over. Next week is when we start anew. I think there are certain people in life that ha have built up enough of a resume to deserve a second chance, and Ron McClain would be top of that list for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 100%. that's just my opinion. You can disagree. You can tell me I'm wrong. Ron McLean has done, tried to at least do nothing but good. And these bitter, these bitter old boys who are former media guys or media guys that are going after him right now are after him because they're bitter about themselves. Well, and he's There's the one no, guy getting baseless, it on both ends, right? Baseless like, accusations. Absolutely baseless crap being thrown at him right now. Um, and and I, I, again, you know what? He doesn't deserve uh, defense for what happened last weekend. He does de deserve defense for the shit that people are throwing his way. And I, I listen, fans are one thing. You're in the media. You're aware of what words do. You're right. aware of their power. And you've got thousands of followers, tens of thousands of followers. Get out of my face with this stuff. You know exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there have been other destructive comments, uh, to quote you, Steve, in the media since. Yep. And people ask... Pat asked us why we didn't talk about one specifically that happened at CTV. 
Um, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why I didn't bring it up. First off, when we recorded our last show, it had just basically happened. Yeah. Right? It, it I think it happened while we were yeah, recording. Yeah, we it recorded, wasn't relevant it was, to our lives at that moment. No, it I don't wasn't. Think like, we it knew it happened. It was, yeah. like, it was like an hour before we'd recorded. Yeah. Right. So people were like, how come you didn't do it? <laughs> and I was like, fuck off. Also, Second, I, di I didn't tweet about Remembrance Day, so. Oh, Jesus. Give me a break. Um, okay. So then beyond that, beyond that. Um, Keep going. Oh, okay. Beyond, beyond, sorry. Beyond oh, all that. Oh, it's, yeah, we'll save it. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not, there, I'm not good at this, Jesse. I'm... People are like, well, if you comment on that, how come you won't comment on this? And let's just be, let's just be honest. Our, to me, our conversation was about the Don Cherry incident. And it wasn't about the other stuff that happened afterwards. Because the aftershocks from that CT, from the social. Yeah. From Jess Allen. Yep. Yeah. Um, People were people were right to be upset about that comment. Yeah, and and it was really not the time for it. And everyone was hungry for someone to be mad at, someone new to be mad and at. And they found her. And well, and she volunteered, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I don't know. I just felt like, you know, she didn't exactly speak like someone who knew what she was talking about. I think if you if you go back and you watch the clip, there are truths to what she says. Yep, is hockey majority white. Statistically, yes, it is. Yes. Absolutely. Does hockey have a bullying culture? I would say yes. I would say... It's in there. Most cultures have an element of bullying to them. Sports cultures. Sports, Sports cultures. Sports well, in particular. I would yeah. Say, yeah. But I, I would say there is some bullying pretty much everywhere you go. Yeah. Uh, and but, it's been addressed by people eloquently and positively. Yeah. Sports and culture... And this wasn't it. Sports culture is also outsized in its aggressiveness and bullying and that sort of thing. What's true about what she said beyond the race thing is that her experience with hockey is a shame. Yep. And it's a shame that that was her experience with hockey. And she's not alone. It's a, it, She's not alone. And that is something that as people who, are, who do love hockey, consider themselves hockey people, uh, whatever level you're at, wherever you are, that's something you have to rectify. That's something we as a group have to rectify. Um, there is a bullying element, but what I saw was a person who was describing to me teenagers, like just like she talked about. Shits. Yeah, and yeah. I have to tell you, I was a shitty guy when I was a teenager too, dude. Same. And same. so, to me, like you look at what happened with with Easter Seals and the outpouring of. Like there was a, it was one hundred three thousand dollars. Uh, we're up to one hundred and four, and across the whole team, probably about a thousand donors. Yeah. So, her comment about it not, um, uh, the comment about you know it being uh, a rich person's culture, in certain degrees, not wrong. But the fact that to, to say that, I guess I would balance it with here's the Easter. If I were to talk to her, I'd say, listen, to me, first off, it's a shame that that's been your experience, and I'm so sorry. That's not. Because that what she told was her personal truth, and people were upset about that. And then where she lost me, and I think where, where she lost everybody, was, well, $5,000 to play hockey, you could go on a great family vacation. And I can tell you, as a parent, yeah. you're going to say, any day, any day, any day, I'll give up the $5,000 vacation if my kid can play team sports for a winner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Doesn't matter what it is. It that was back... a ridiculous statement. It yeah. was. Yeah. But I think she let it get away from her. It, yeah. Oh, for you sure. Know? It's, uh, yeah, apparently life TV's hard. <laughs> It's but really hard. Uh, one one thing I'll say, it, or I'll, I'll go back to something we said last show, which is, uh, you know, with your outrage, um, even uh, legitimate outrage, remember what you're trying to do. Like, are, are you trying to change hearts and minds? Mm -hmm. Or are you just trying to get someone fired? It feels like you probably should. And that just, it felt, who who was like, you know what? I haven't thought of it that way. All right. After she said that, right? Like, who? Uh, yeah. You know mm -hmm. what? And, you, and, thank you for opening my eyes. And you have to I, she didn't that change any hearts or minds. Not everybody's going to be eloquent when they're telling you a story that, like, she didn't really tell I just, the story. I scream for a living. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think, I think, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with what she said. I think it's objectively wrong. I think there were some truths in it, but I think overall, objectively wrong. Yeah. You can be wrong and right at the same time. Totally, for sure. you can have truths to your inaccurate um, argument. Oftentimes, people use that. As a way of saying, well, see, this is true in my argument, so the whole argument must be true, which is not true. The The point here is that she made a comment from her perspective, which wasn't 
a particularly deep deep cut on on uh, in terms of education on what hockey actually is for most families. And that's why people were so outraged. Now, it, you can say, well, how, how come they didn't fire her? How come she can say stuff like that and she doesn't get fired? Well, how many how many times you heard of Jess Allen before this? Unless you're a, like a, a hardcore fan of The Social. She was an editor at McLean's, and she is a part of that show. And unless you watch that show all the time, you probably don't know Jess that well. Never. She's also paid to just give her opinion yes. on the TV show. Yes. That's what she did. And people were like, but Dawn got fired for this. Dawn did this 50 million freaking times. It was his revenant. They had enough of it. It was his revenant. That was the straw that broketh the cameleth back. It it, it might not have been Titanic, but let's just give him one. It's not. You know how Leonardo DiCaprio won for the revenant and you went, oh, that one? This wasn't Wolf of Wall Street. It wasn't Titanic, you know? Wasn't even Catch Me If You Can. Wasn't even. What was the one where um, the Martin Scorsese film where he's on the island? Oh, oh, that was a real good one. Wasn't it just called the island? It was called the island. I think it might have been. It might have been called Wait, the island. Was it like a bad dream the whole time or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It turned out it was a dream. That's a fantastic movie. Wait, wasn't that the other one that no. always went blah? That's the one with That's the dream. Inception. That's Inception. Oh yeah, that one. But the other one it turns the out the other one a bad turns dream out. Too. It was, no, it was just he was yeah. He's was always dream. in dream or movies or hallucinating. He was or something. hallucinating. Yeah, or it was a ghost or what wacky. A, what I don't things? know, man. I don't even know what happened. Great movie, but I loved it. Not definitely better than The Revenant. <laughs> it's like sex the first time. I don't even know what happened, but I loved it. No, uh, <laughs> but he got it for The Revenant. <laughs> The, the thing is, the thing is, I you, think this got away from us. Yes, it did. The thing is here. Let's just get back to it just for a quick second. The thing is, Steve, what did you say about the comment? And you said it so perfectly in one sentence. Uh, it was to the argument. It was destructive to the entire thing. It wasn't. A, uh, it didn't help anything or anyone. No, it didn't. No. Either side. No, it didn't. Yeah. However, however. Was it? Are you really serious with this fire Jess, Jess Allen hashtag? Are you, you serious? Yeah, these people don't even care about the show. Yeah, come on. You know? <laughs> come on. You just you just got on the mob and you were excited about getting on a mob and yeah. and, uh, and you should go and research um, mob mentality and how dangerous it and is. And it was it's so funny because so many people on the other side for the Don Cherry were complaining about cancel culture and how it got Don Cherry canceled and they're like, so we're so going to do it to the that? other yeah. side. <laughs> like well, that's that's not. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm upset that people are doing this thing to this guy, like, so I'm going to do it to her. Like, that's not... How how, hey, does, how does that make any sense? It's it's just like when you're on the street, and somebody... <laughs> you're driving your car, and somebody cuts you off, and you look... And you pull up beside them, and you go, hey, fuck you. And they say, hey, fuck you. And you both drive away. Boy, you both accomplished a whole lot on that, didn't you? That's the whole week this week. Give them the teeth. Yeah. Like, just <laughs> give them the teeth. It's the best. <laughs> anyway. They shouldn't be looking at you anyway. Listen, give them the teeth. Look at the road, stupid. It's, it's all fun. Well. Uh, it's not all fun. It's terrible. Um, I'm <laughs> ready for this week to be over. Uh, I'm done. It's not relevant anymore. Let's yeah. move on. Let's talk about hockey. And let's talk about a rule where in hockey, um, you can get hit in the face with a puck, be bleeding all over the ice, but the play goes on. You saw That Matt, was horrible. You saw mm-hmm. Matt Calvert take a puck off the face. Like the, uh, I think it was like the back of the head or oh, something. Yeah. And well, he's... and beyond beyond that, because like I I don't blame the ref for not totally knowing that Matt Calvert was hurt based on his reaction, uh, because you gotta I don't know. He tried to get up. Maybe you're looking at him and you're looking elsewhere and you think he's Sorry, on there are his four way up. Officials on the ice. That that is true. That's a perfectly good point. But what got me, like Nathan McKinnon's going to help him up, and the guy who hit him, Elias Pettersson, is like look at him. He's, he's calling yeah. for the play to be over yeah. while his team's got an empty net in less than three minutes to play. Elias Pettersson, the Canucks' best player, is calling for the play to end. And the Canucks scored. Look, didn't look they? at the Canucks. Yeah, They're they ashamed score. of themselves. They score They're the looking at him right now. They know it was awkward. They blew it. They blew it, and if Nathan McKinnon pays a single cent, it's a crime. Him and Zach Wierenski. Zach Wierenski was uh, shouting out, or I guess going to bat for a former teammate. It's so funny, too, because when they're scoring that goal, um, Pedersen, he doesn't jump back into the play. No. He just hovers around Calvert, and he's just kind of his little thing. He's like, I'm not going to keep like playing. Defending him, he's basically. just like, yeah, make sure nothing hits this guy who I just hit in the head. Yeah, And it's, it's four on four, essentially, so, and they score. So the question it's, is, what do you do? Because here's what happens. That happens in the playoffs, and they blow it dead, and the team doesn't score that yeah. was trying to score. What then? 
What then is you get mad in the moment because you go, oh shit, we had a chance to score, and then you immediately go, oh, he's bleeding from the head. Yeah. Like human, any any human normal person here. would go, oh shit, he's bleeding from the head. And yeah. this yeah. isn't this isn't Jack Edwards a couple years ago. I think I know what you're talking about. This isn't Jack Edwards with Andreas Janssen, where like <laughs> he could have got up maybe, and yeah. we didn't really know what was going on. He was bleeding from the head. And what do you say to the people who are saying that the refs were just calling it by the buck, where it's you can't blow a play dead unless the team whose injured player is down gains possession of the puck. Well, it goes back to a conversation we've had uh, in the past on this show is, I know they're going by the book, but some of the rules in the book are pretty bad. <laughs> the guy, I don't know, do we got to put an addendum if he's bleeding from the head? Call the play dead? It even rhymes. It's easy to remember. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't, That that's that's terrible. Do you place any blame on the Avalanche, or not the Avalanche, the Canucks for not just passing the puck to the Avalanche? Uh, I guess their job is to play to the whistles or whatever, but right. like one of them didn't. Elias Pettersson's like, uh, he didn't even know what to do. Mm-hmm. How? And also, where are you looking? If you're not looking at that, you heard the crack. You see there's a guy on the ice, the captain of the Avalanche is there, the best player on the Canucks is there. What are you looking at? I don't understand what was going on. And Adam, that's a great point. I didn't even think of that. It's not one guy. It's a whole crew. That's horrible. That's horrible. And, like, Canucks fans, like, you got to be in a really awkward position because they ended up scoring two goals and tying the game there. It went to overtime. you got to admit the the team that should have won won. Yeah. The Colorado Avalanche winning that game was justice. And it... It's unfortunate because it's not like the Canucks did anything wrong. I don't think no, they did. No, they didn't. No. They didn't. I mean, it's it, just shitty. Yeah. It's a shitty position to put them in, too, right? Uh, yeah. I guess, I guess what they could have done is, like, all of them throw their hands up yeah, or well, something and well, go the stop thing, the play. The thing, if you want to stop the play, you just pass it to any of the Avalanche players, right? Oh, that's how you, yeah. That's how you stop it. But, or you could have done that. But it's, um, not, it's also not on them, but also... But it's, you also have an empty net. Right. And, like, because the play hasn't been blown dead. and like You don't know that the ref's going to blow it dead. You could do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They could just fire it down. One thing yeah. I was talking to, I, I think I <laughs> br- brought this up last show, is uh, not every player knows every rule, especially in the moment. Like, Colby Armstrong was, uh, we were talking about, I asked him, I go, do you, was there ever a situation when you were playing where, like, you a rule came about that you didn't know about? And it wasn't when he was playing, but there was a play he talked about where, remember a few years ago in a playoff game, Andrew Shaw headbutted a puck in? And the game was over. He won a playoff game by headbutting the puck I in. I don't remember that. And it didn't count. I remember that. Yeah, they called yeah. it back. Well, I didn't know that was a rule. I knew you <laughs> couldn't kick it. You can't headbutt a puck in? Why? Why not? I uh, remember talking about it on the show. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't understand why. It's oh my like, god! It's not um, like that's a play you could play in anyway in hockey. <laughs> yeah. Like no one's gonna be like, all right, plays. flip it off the dog and let's do yeah. it. Yeah, oh for sure. Oh fucking dunk, let's go. <laughs> who, who was it? Paul Byron or or Philip Deneau? Oh, dear. Philip Deneau last night. Did you see the the goal called back in the Habs game? Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. I they you were, were about, about like, to win ago. the game, and he he literally the puck is on the ice. It was the groin shot. And he, yeah, and he yeah. just went, eh. like, <laughs> yeah. while he was lying down, he humped the puck in. Yeah. And they called that, like, a kicking motion? Yeah. What? Why isn't that allowed? I believe that's called crotching. Crotching. The crotching, crotching. motion. And then yes. the Devils win in overtime. Yeah. They're trying, I understand the the spirit of the rule in hockey where it's, we want you to score with your stick. I get it. Like, I get it, but, game. like, but How, like why, they don't why, always then, score with their stick. Then why isn't it score with your stick and nothing else counts? It, no, no, but you're allowed That's to score with point. your stick as long, or sorry, you're allowed to score with something that isn't your stick as long as you didn't mean to. Yeah, you're as long to as oops, it wasn't intentional. You're allowed to oops into it, which right. is stupid. You can oops Do daisies into it. Shit or get off the pot. <laughs> this I don't understand why that's my, not allowed. This is my thing with the ref thing. Yeah. If, you, if you don't want to trust the refs, <laughs> this is why I hate replay now. Because if you don't want to trust the refs and trust that the refs are going to make mistakes, then just go to full, <clears throat> full computer. Okay, so and, there's two things with that if you hate replay. Um... Did you see headlines last night? No, I didn't see it fully. Where they're thinking about changing off sides. So what was the what was the change? Oh, so, to the plane. Yeah, it, well, one, they're trying to make it go to the ceiling. <coughs> yep. So it's across the entire plane. That's and that's they should be. And then they're encouraging refs to let play continue and let replay handle it. 
So they want more refs to not call close off sides so that the play can continue just in case but they, they score. But if they do that, but then, that, but then, then that negates that, the play. so mad because then more people are just going to be upset that goals get called back. So the NHL is just digging a hole deeper. Anyways, that's what Chris This Johnson is the thing, reported. man. Either let computers do it or let people do it. Right. People will make mistakes. Computers will suck. Which do you want? I'll take the mistakes, please. <laughs> Yeah. I would rather have human beings on the ice. I'd rather have human beings doing it. I would rather have human beings fuck up. I would rather them fuck up. It's my favorite thing to do. It's our whole show. Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I pull an atom up? No, go ahead. Uh, then I can ask you about McKinnon's comments on the issue. So do you have them in front of you? Because I, uh, I need to uh, reread. I do. I have the quote here. He says, I can only imagine if that was LeBron James. His head was bleeding, and they let the other team take a three-pointer to tie the game. I know it's not the ref's fault. It's the league rule, but I think you need to look at, need to look and who's laying on the ice. You need to look at, I guess they quoted him wrong. I think you need to look at who's laying on the ice. What do you think about that? I mean, you know, I think the issue is that, that he's absolutely right, and it's a dated rule. Um. You have to look out for, and we got to remember this. Why do we forget this? Why is it that with sports we go, oh, yeah, welfare doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, how his life is outside of this, beyond this, doesn't matter. We need to get beyond that. And uh, I don't know that we ever will because I just don't think humans think that way. Because if your thought is, and I said this to Steve because I was playing devil's advocate. If your thought is, but my team got screwed because some guy was dumb enough to fall down in front of the puck and hit it in his head. And mm -hmm. you know there would be lots of people that would say that. They'd be like, well, he put his head in front of the puck. Okay. Um, what should matter is the health of the players. The players are the product. The players are why we come to see it. And listen, Matt Calvert jerseys probably don't fly off the shelf. But Matt Calvert's an NHL player. Matt Calvert probably has a family, even if he doesn't have kids or a wife. He's, somebody gave birth to him. Somebody raised him. It matters how it's going to be for him afterwards. And the NHL has and will continue to have issues with lawsuits after these guys are playing if they don't look after this shit. Let him get off the ice. Give the, give the Canucks a, 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 an offensive zone start. Like, don't pull it out of the offensive zone. The Canucks had it in the O zone, fair and square. Give them a, get, you know, do the, do the face-off. And if, you're, if the Canucks are good enough to tie the game, then they'll tie the game. But they're already down two goals anyway. Yeah, I sided with uh, Eric Johnson, who he went on Nashville's local radio, and they had like a cool. seven-second delay, and they had trouble bleeping him because he said, it's a fucking joke. You want to protect a guy? Guy's got a family at home. He's laying there bleeding out his head, and you don't blow the whistle. It's a complete joke, an absolute joke. They should be ashamed of themselves. And I think that's the point. They are it's right. Like, at the right. End, it's what we were just talking about. At the end of the day, sports should be entertainment. And if a guy's bleeding, that has nothing to do and with if, his family back at And home. if your team that was already down loses because, well, they had to blow a play dead because a guy got we hit with a 100-mile-an-hour puck. Yeah. in the middle of the ice. We wanted him to not die. <laughs> oh, shit, my team lost. Then you know what? Uh, your team fucking lost. Yeah. And if you have a problem with that, fuck you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy's alive, I came back though. to a great part. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, really. Really, what you can't like? Listen, I know we all get sports brain, and we're all like, ah! like if it was the Leafs, I'd be like, oh my god, I want them to compete. And if it was against Boston, and let's say it's Marshan, and Marshan gets hit with the puck, and Marshan's bleeding, and the Leafs go on and score, I'd like to think that I'm smart enough and reasonable enough to go, no, nah, that shouldn't count. Right. Right. I'd right. like to think. I get and, you freaking out in the moment. Maybe, oh, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, maybe but in then the moment you I go, see. I send a dumb tweet in the moment. Fine. But 24 hours later, I'm going to go, yeah, that was the right call. Not mm -hmm. even 24 hours. I don't think it would take you that long. I think you'd see, once you actually saw what was going on, mm -hmm. probably by the time you hit send, unless, you'd be like, oh, shit. Unless I was like Jack Edwards, well, that's karma for Roman Polak. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then when they ask you about it again, you go, well, I so would have said. <laughs> Jack Edwards, calling it down the middle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, oh, this is, Merrick says middle. that every ice surfing is freaking great. <laughs> anyway. That was funny. The... Yeah. the I think the point here is welfare of players yeah. should matter the most. It's a workplace. Workplace safety fucking matters, man. Yeah, the Canucks, Are we kidding? The Canucks snatched a point out of it. Can you imagine the Avs lose? Oof. It's, it's a thousand times worse. Oof.
I hope get, the NHL's do we know? Be thrilled that uh, I, I haven't seen an update on Calvert today. No? Okay. Mm. No. Uh, uh, they said latest, uh, they are in Vancouver, I think, practicing again on Monday. So the latest update we won't hear until the news cycle on Monday. Um, did you guys see Darcy Kemper throw uh, Brady Chuck? Sorry. Um, Matthew Kuchuk. Matthew Kuchuk to the ice. Mm-hmm. Legend. Uh, <laughs> Darcy Kemper finally had enough. And it was funny because I think Demers, uh, Demers, was hit pretty hard by one of the guys. There's two flames in front yeah. of that. And then, and then so he's down. Cross check. He's got his he's got his head down, and they're cross checking him oh, as you know, he's down. I, I laughed at that because it, they were. What if he's hurt, man? <laughs> but they were trying to hurt him, and he he clearly was okay. And it was just little taps. It was a little funny. Well, that that's. <laughs> They were just little chicken shit yeah, cross checks to a guy who was down. <laughs> and Darcy Kemper was absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely right. It was great to see. It was fun. I, I liked seeing it. I, I, you uh, know what? I know that fighting is very dangerous, but every once in a while, it's nice to see a, someone get theirs. We got a good goalie <laughs> fight out of it. Yeah. 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 And really, he just sort of like grabbed him and body slammed him. Yeah. Yeah. And all, like, I love when goalies realize they're on the ice, too. Yeah. And don't just skate out of the net. Yeah. Like, no, there's a fight going on. It's not. And, like, you have a teammate to stick up for. You'd, you would hope, you would want him to stick up for you. Here's the thing. The goalies stay away from it most of the time because it's not worth it to their team. They're so important to their team. It's Like, Arizona yeah. is second in the Pacific di- Division right now. Darcy Kemper's a big reason for that. You can't. Like, if you're him and a he gets hurt. Or, or hurt. Remember, yeah. remember when McDavid got he, into a he fight almost, in junior? And he almost wrecked broke his, his knee, too, eh? If you if you watch real close. Oh, really? He, That's oh, the thing. He fell real weird. Yeah. Well, it, like, McDavid broke his hand, and he was always already going first overall. But, like, he broke his hand because he fought a guy mm-hmm. in yeah, December. He, he Why? Missed, he missed... He almost missed the World Juniors, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, he missed punching the guy, and he punched the boards. <laughs> That's what broke his hand. How's your hand, by the way? Oh, it's right. jammed pretty bad. I jammed it at uh, at, at Easter Seals. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, and I haven't been able to. I was trying to open. Uh, uh, Caprice gave me like a jar of pickles yesterday to open, and I couldn't oh, no. do it. <laughs> so oh. I had to flip it to the other side. Now, I already don't have strong enough hands, so oftentimes if I have a bottle that's too hard, I give it to Jesse, who has actual I have, strength. I have large hands. He's, yes. Not just large. Strong. Nah, strong strong yeah. hands. Uh, anyway, uh, it. It was usually you don't see goalies getting involved because of that. But, but it was awesome. It was pretty cool anyway. We liked it, right? Oh yeah. Yes, yes. Did you guys see the Sunquist play? Did yeah. you have a hearing for? With oh, Gibson. Gibson. Did he Gibson. bring the goalie? I no, believe he's been. Did you watch an in, update on that? Did you watch it in uh, uh, real speed? Like, yeah. I think he. You it, don't think he meant to? It wasn't as bad as it looks. Ooh. He he, he jumps chip. into the board. Like he's he's going full speed. You think it was just unfortunate? He cuts around. Yeah, it's it's a very unfortunate circumstance because he's just coming, he's speeding around the around the back of the net. And he kind of jumps in the board and he nails him in the head. It's clearly a penalty and very offside. But like he knows that's a two minute penalty. He's not going in there being like, I'm gonna take a penalty here on this non play behind the net. But it could be a little bit of what Nathan McKinnon said. The oh, you think if LeBron James was lying there? I guess you guys talked about that when I was gone. We did, yeah. yeah. Um, it's Oscar Sundquist and John Gibson. Mm-hmm. Like John Gibson's one of the best goalies in the league. Oscar Sundquist is some guy. Yeah. And the most we know about Sundquist, unless you're a Blues fan, is the the, the guy who got crushed by Tom Wilson. And he was. It's there. Not it's sorry, weird. Sorry, he's Blues weirdly, fans. Blues fans are gonna be really upset with me for that. But no, I mean, but he's weirdly connected to player safety, where. He was the victim of a yes, headshot. Yes, he was. Bad one. And a guy mm-hmm. got a, Yeah, it was a bad one, and he got a big suspension that he absolutely deserved. Mm-hmm. Tom Wilson did. Now, I wonder if, like, because he's connected to it, they go, well, you were involved in one of these, so you know what a bad hit looks like. What is this? Yeah. Well, they fined him $7,300, which oh. is the maximum allowable under the CBA. So he is didn't get suspended? Decision? No, di- no okay. suspension. I th- and I think that's fair. I think that should be the problem. If he got suspended, I would have been a little seventy three hundred dollars. Wow. Man, that's going to be real. Tough. But, but now he's got a record. All right. Now he's got a record. Now, now, now if he now gets something else within what is it, eighteen months, sixteen months or something, then he's a repeat offender. So I think it's eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen. Yeah. yeah. Guys, there you go. Dallas fans are upset with us, <laughs> as they should. Why? Be. Because we keep Why saying the time? Stars are not a very good hockey team. We do. Well, I I guess. We said they I, started. Maybe poorly. I said it. Yeah. They started one seven and one. No, they're fine now. They're eleven eight and two. Oh my 
God. That's a good turnaround. So they're hot as shit. Yeah, good for them. I think I think they have a right to be upset. I don't think as Leafs fans we have any right to complain no. about. Or Man, to don't criticize get on any other. Yo, yo, I can still no. say, yo, if your team sucks, your team sucks. The, <laughs> if the Leafs suck, I'll say it. Yo, uh, am I supposed to say, you know what, Minnesota, your guys are great. You're great. You're sitting at the bet. You're under the Kings. The Kings are sitting on top of you. But you know what? The Leafs are bad, so I can't say it. No, no, no. <laughs> I can say whatever. No. If your team sucks, it sucks, man. Sorry. <laughs> Vegas, by the way. Vegas is interesting. I know the Leafs, uh, B- B- I guess. But yeah, Vegas yeah, is currently one, or sorry, one, two, three, three teams away from being the team sitting on the outside of the wild card. Interesting. The points differential, though, is two. So you've got Calgary in the last wild card spot right now, 23 points. Anaheim, 22 points. Nashville, 21. San Jose, 21. Vegas, 21. That's, San Jose's a lot closer than I thought. They sure are. 10 and 10. Aw oh, shucks, said the Sens. Also, not really aw oh, shucks because uh, the Sens are pretty close to tying and passing the Leafs. Cool times. Pretty well, they, cool, they right? They have 17 points and the Leafs have 22. Yeah, I don't think close is... That's not close. Five points? Yeah. Mm. In the NHL, that's not close. No. Mm. It might feel closer oh, by the end of next week. Steven, <laughs> come on. The Leafs' next <laughs> opponent, by the, way, by the way, is the Golden Knights. In the last, Leafs' last five, they are <laughs> zero, four, and one. <laughs> they have, that's such they have an two unbelievable... regulation wins in the last 15 games. <laughs> What an unbelievably bad thing. And, and look oh, at who they've so beaten. Bad. <laughs> look at who they've beaten. No one of no consequence. One. They have not beaten a real team. Mm-mm. Maybe one. Mm-mm. Have they beaten a real team? Not in three periods. Yeah, it was in overtime. They beat Boston in overtime. Yeah, yeah. They beat Vegas in overtime. They beat Philly in the shootout. Their regulation wins are, oof, it's depressing. It's terrible. Um, have you guys, did you guys see, speaking of, since we're back on the Leafs, did you guys see the stat for the goal differential for the Leafs this season? No. The first period, they're minus 12. Oh, I saw that. Yep. The second period, they're plus 12. The third period, they're minus 2. So if they but can that's them in a nutshell. If they can just yeah. clean up the first period. <laughs> no, but they don't deserve the credit for the plus 12 in the second period. No. They're plus 12 in the second period because they're minus 12 in the first period. But if you combine... They're always playing down. If you combine the first and second, they're zero. Yeah, and then you add the third... So, so that, really minus that two. is every Leaf game in a nutshell, though. <laughs> losing in the first, coming back in the second, ultimately losing the game because you're the worst team. That's them in a nutshell. Those, I know that's not exactly analytics, but that it's, does that does pass the smell test. It's some type of analytics, that's for sure. They don't start on time. They're always playing from behind. And then when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, they freaking lose. That sounds about right. Sounds about right. Well, um, just so you guys know, uh, Nazem Kadri's on pace for 60 points this year. Great. And huh. good. Uh, Alex Kerfoot might be out for six weeks. Great. Good. Yeah, cool. So things are good. good things shit. are looking up, I would say. Those are good things. These are all good things. <laughs> yeah. Well, In- injury he sustained on that hit that no one did anything about. Yeah. You know who would have? It's a really good team. Naz. Naz. <laughs> I mean, he'd be so suspended, but it'd be really cool. Yeah, well. Hey, let's do the press conference quick. Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. I really, I wanted the show to be more positive. I came in in a great mood. Came in carrying a trophy. Um, Steven. Yes. How did the Rachel's Raiders, Easter Seal, Celebrity, Classic, brought to you by Eric Lindros, something, something... Montgomery Burns Award of Excellence. Go on Friday. Oh, I get to put on my jersey. Feel all good about. It. <laughs> Here, let let me just. Oh yeah, Mwah. gotta get that in there. The Peter William Dixon Memorial All Star Cup Classic. It's probably got too many names, but there it is. There it is. That's as close as I'm gonna get to winning the cup. Look at that. I've been wanting this all year, folks. Rachel's Raiders top fundraisers. We friggin' earned it, right? Yep, absolutely. Hundred and four thousand uh, dollars raised for kids who need it. Feeling pretty good about that right now. The classic itself. Uh, well, we sustained a couple injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam Wild is on the IR with a uh, jammed hand. Jesse, are you okay? 
I'm feeling fresh as a daisy. Fresh, fresh as a day. I'm day to day with uh, with my back. We did have a player leave in an ambulance <laughs> because their back was so mangled. Yeah. Uh, they just reached for a puck funny, and then they sat down and they did that thing where they sit down and they so can't what is cannot his, get back up. What is his back? What actually? Supposedly it's, it's muscular. Oh, okay. Which is like a herniated disc probably, or anything like that. No, no, no. I was worried about the disc for sure. We won our first game. We lost our second game eight to three, mm-hmm. but you'll notice I didn't say eight to two. It was eight to two until your boy scored a goal <laughs> on a penalty shot. Now, Woo! did the goalie let it go in? You know, I've watched the replay a bunch of times. I don't think he did. I don't think he did either. No, I, I don't think he, think he did. I think he. Uh, I think he was caught off guard. So here's what happened, though. I think it was sneak attack. So <laughs> all warm up. I was shooting on our goalie, which, by the way, Adam recruited our goalie, Trent. Trent, who's the man. Oh, I work out with Trent. He's Holy great. shit, he stood on his head. He uh, won us the third game by himself. Yeah, yes. we got two wins. Uh, at least one is solely his doing. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Entirely. So all warm-up, I was going five-hole on him. Or I was trying to go five-hole. Uh, I was concentrating on going low because... What I found is in my garage and on the ice when there's no goalie, it's fun to go high and ping it off the bar. And during a game, it's actually really hard to do. So, oh, yeah. so I was like, okay, I'm just <laughs> going to shoot it as hard and fast as I can and keep it low and hopefully find an area. So I get in there and I wish there was a camera on my face because you could see me concentrating, concentrating. And then at one point I went, oh, just shoot it. Mm-hmm. You stupid idiot. So he was giving me five hole. Um... With, I guess he was playing possum, right? That's where he wanted yeah, me to shoot. Yeah, he was like way far out, and he's like, just shoot it. Yeah, shoot it. that's where he wanted me yeah. to shoot, and that's 100% where I was going to shoot it. Mm-hmm. But because I'm not that good, the shot didn't go anywhere near where I wanted to shoot it, and it went in. <laughs> it yeah. went in right above his pad, um, below his glove. Yeah. And uh, it was a dart. It was a very nice shot. You know what? Yeah, it was hard. It wasn't yeah. necessarily was true. It? Who was the alumni that took the slap shot to give you the penalty shot? Oh, was it the alumni? I'm br- so here's the problem. I don't wear contacts out there, and I really need to start because I couldn't tell who anyone was. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was an alum. I think it was just a normal guy. It was just a yeah. guy? Yeah. It was, yeah. it was oh, Troy okay. Crowder who was on the team. Oh, okay. So I don't think it was him, yeah, though. No, no, then it wouldn't have been him, no. Uh, yeah, so one of the guys took a slap shot just to give you a penalty shot. That was is, is that why you did that? I don't know. Probably. There's only matter. 10 seconds left in the matter. game. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't, I'll take it. It was a great goal. Uh, yeah, felt really good. Yeah, it was really cool. And you almost had one, man. This is almost as a stretch. You dropped to your knee to like <laughs> bang it. Yeah, I, tr- I got I got fed a pass by Eric Lindros. I was out front, right in front of the net. He he found me out front, and I tried to slap it, and I ended I up was screaming <laughs> as it happened. I was like, yeah! uh, I thought that was going in. Just, I thought it was going and in, and I ended up on my bottom. But then then I shoveled a backhand limply to the net. You did. And- <laughs> And that was so goal, good. The goalie stopped it. I didn't have ah. a shot the whole thing. That was defense. You had one shot. Did I have a shot? Yeah, yeah. You had a shot on goal. Adam's least... on D, and he had a couple fire drill oh, shifts. Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Bad, bad. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> I don't think you were a dash very often. Some guy kept shoving you. Yeah, a guy. Oh, a guy yeah. got. So I used my body, and and because it's hockey. You didn't and a guy it. fell, and then his buddy came over, and they were older. And he said, hey, hey, simmer down 16, because I ended up with the number 16. And uh, and I was like, hey, man, I I was just using my body. He's like, yeah, fuck off. And I was like, fuck off for charity, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what you said? (laughs) I didn't know any of this happened. (laughs) And then I went up to his buddy and apologized to him afterwards and said, hey, man, sorry about that. He's like, yeah, no problem. Oh. oh really? Yeah. So I, you were on the other side of him when I saw him getting up. He looked mad. So were they pushing you back? <laughs> oh, sorry. Are you gonna go to a hockey rink and get f- and be mad because someone knocked you a little? Well, that's bit? what oh. happened two it years ago. It wasn't a hit. Yeah, I, was, I can see being <laughs> upset in the out. moment, yeah. but yeah, 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 come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, like, like, like really, like, you're gonna fall in hockey, guys. You're gonna. There's going to be. It doesn't matter if there's hitting or not, your friend, or, or at all. Like, and they're usually for for grown men. There shouldn't be hitting yeah. because we all have work tomorrow. But you <laughs> are going to get bodied out. If you I, get bodied out and you fall, that is your that's part of the game. Sometimes it's a little physical when you're playing. The, when you're trying to get it's the hockey. Yeah. I yeah. fell because some goon hit me. Now, granted, that goon was Harrison Brown and on what our team, but goon. 
Yeah, yeah friggin it was, it's so fun to watch Harrison play hockey because you just learn stuff. You're like, hey, wow. Learn stuff like, <laughs> the I'm thing. bad at this. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I learned. Yeah, yeah. Eric Lindros definitely like passing to Harrison. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there was one. I So I got two assists. Both were on Eric Lindros' goals, so nice. I don't think they should count. Um, but... Uh, I, I turned around after one of the goals to like high five everyone on the ice and I saw that that I was a forward and the two other forwards I was out with were Eric Lindros and Harrison Brown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, didn't, you didn't have to do much for that goal. I was yeah, you know how we always accuse the Oilers of being dry saddle McDavid and Guy? Mm-hmm. I was Guy. <laughs> and it was great. It was lots of fun. Lots yeah. of fun. So listen, great tournament. Thank you to everybody who donated yeah. because uh, truly you did make a difference. And $103,000 is, it's just a, it's it's such a big amount of money that it almost doesn't compute. You're like, yeah. I don't know how to process that, but but thank you. Um, yeah. Cannot believe, cannot believe it. Just just yeah. way above what our expectations would have been. And just like what a, what a, you know, for all the yelling and disagreements and whatever, what a what an excellent village we're part of. Yes, you guys, like you're uh-huh. a- absolutely fantastic. I think it was something like a thousand of you donated. Some of them were big donations. Some of them were just what you could. Mm-hmm. And I think they all have the exact same value morally, anyway. And even if you didn't donate, you just hit a like, you hit a retweet, you just amplified it uh, in any way that you could. Thank you so much. Um, you're doing, doing a lot of good for was, kids who could use it. I was talking about it with uh, Sean Fitzgerald, who was also at the tournament in, yes. the, in the locker room. We were just talking about how we've cultivated such a great hive of people mm-hmm. that are willing to support these initiatives and you know, just positive individuals. Who want to do right. Yeah. Yeah, we're very, very lucky. You know, we don't always agree with everyone, and you, got, you don't always agree with us, but i got to say... Sometimes comment sections get a little carried away. Yeah, well, we all get carried away, don't we? And, yeah. and I think at the end of the day, it's so kind... And it's such a nice thing to remember that, like, holy crap, like, we are so lucky and blessed to have the group of people that exist within this community. And I really believe, I don't look at it as, like, listeners, I kind of look at it as just a community. And, you know, you Mm -hmm. see that every time we do a live event. It is just a community of people, of like-minded people that have divergent opinions. Uh, but at the end of the day, are good people and and mean well, and it it you really shone through on this one. Uh-huh. Abs, I will never ever forget this as long as I live. No, and now you gotta outdo yourselves next year. So. Oh, okay, thanks, Coach, <laughs> coach Steve. It's never enough for Coach Steve. All right, nope. Steve Babcock. All you right. gotta, you know what? You guys got championship DNA now, so expectations have changed. Shows up. Just saying. The one story I wanted to get in there, uh, Lindros had a Leafs jersey on him, Lindros 88 jersey. He puts it on, and he goes out for our first game. Our first game, the alumni on the other team was John LeClaire, and Lindros isn't even on the ice yet. LeClaire skates over and just gives him one of these, one of the look, the, the once-overs, and Lindros just goes, ah, yeah, yeah, you're right, and he goes back in the locker room and puts his Flyers jersey on. <laughs> It was so funny. Leclerc goes, you were leave for like 20 games. <laughs> and I said, so I said, uh, 33. And Lindros I, turns around and goes, was it 33? <laughs> That's awesome. It was absolutely way, great. Leclerc still got the fire. Oh, yeah. 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 I, uh, I, I, I shouted Legion of Dud at him when Lindros was on the bench besides me. And he goes, Dad, dude, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you should chirp professional hockey players. Yeah. There, he, he goes, no, don't poke the bear. It's probably That's not a, a good no, idea. No, you know what Steve did, too? Can we just bring this up? Before we wrap the show, and what I swear I to God, we're wrapping it what up. I do? What happened? So we were talking about that, and Jesse and I were not there when, when or sorry, yeah, we weren't there. Oh, that was the first yelled. game. Yeah, yeah we, we guys were there. We weren't there. So you're retelling it in the dressing room. You're talking about how, how Eric changed his jersey, and Eric's there, and he's laughing along. And then you were like, yeah, so who was captain anyway? To Eric Lindros. Yeah. <sighs> like, do you want him to kill you? He's going to punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah, but what a story to tell. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, for you guys, I'll be dead. But <laughs> Like, can you imagine? No, he was hey, awesome. Eric, Eric, hey, uh, John Eric. Leclerc got you to change your jersey. Were you actually captain, or was he... <laughs> What? <laughs> Bold. Bold. Yeah, well, you know why you didn't talk back? Oh. There you go, right there. there, there, there I'm there. the captain now. That's why. He was also great. My dad's in the stands. He's watching me play hockey for the first time. He kept going, Gary! <laughs> Screaming at him, took a picture. And then when I scored my goal, I gave him the puck. Oh. Like a like a great guy that I am. I'm that's a great amazing. guy. He's a noted great guy, Steve Django. Anyway, that's it for us this episode. We will uh, we'll see you Wednesday. 
Can't wait to wake up to your tweets. <laughs> <laughs> Take no, a sip. And all seriously, let's move on. Let's move forward. And let's finably get a Leaf fucking win. Can we get that, please? Babcock's going to be head coach until we all die. Forever. He'll kill forever us. and ever and ever. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness. Connection complete.